31 Emer section 1 The sons of Aaron We learned that when God commanded the people to purify themselves he made the same admonition to the priests the sons of Aaron Rabbi Yehuda speaks about the light of God that is stored up for the righteous in the world to come but that is hidden from the wicked we are told about how difficult it is for the soul to leave the body at the time of death and about why the body must not be left unburied for very long Rabbi Yehuda talks about the possibility of immediate reincarnation and the body of light he tells us about the flow of holy ointment that is drawn down upon the priest one and Hashem said to Moses speak to the priests the sons of Aaron and say to them there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people Vayikra 211 Rabbi Yossi said what is the reason that this corresponds with that which is said before a man also or woman that is a medium or a wizard shall surely be put to death Vayikra 2027 so that the verse speak to the priests is adjacent to it he replies once admonishing Israel to sanctify themselves in every manner it also admonished the priests to sanctify themselves and the Levites as well how do we know it admonished the priests from the words speak to the priests and as for the Levites it says thus speak to the Levites and say to them Emidbar 1826 thus they will all be righteous holy and pure too speak to the priests the sons of Aaron he asks what is the reason it is written here the sons of Aaron do not know they are the sons of Aaron and he answers this teaches us they are the sons of Aaron rather than the sons of Levi because Aaron is the first of all the priests for it is him that the Holy One blessed be he had chosen above everyone so as to make peace in the world and because Aaron's practices have brought him up to this for Aaron strove throughout his life to increase peace in the world since these were his ways the Holy One blessed be he raised him to priesthood to introduce peace among the celestial retinue for through his worship he brings about the union of the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechena which brings peace throughout the world hence speak to the priests the sons of Aaron three speak to the priests the sons of Aaron and say to them Rabbi Yehuda opened with the verse oh how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you tell him 3120 oh how great is your goodness how superior and precious is that lofty light that is called good as written and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Bear she 14 This is the treasured light with which the Holy One blessed be he does good in the world he does not withhold it any day and the world is maintained and supported by it which you have laid up for those who fear you for we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he made a lofty light when he created the world and treasured it for the righteous for the future to come this is the meaning of which you have laid up for those who fear you which you have performed for those who trust in you for performed for those who trust in you before when the world was created this light was shining from the beginning of the world to its end when the Holy One blessed be he saw the wicked that will live in the world he concealed that light this is the meaning of and from the wicked their light is withheld Dio 3815 the Holy One blessed be he will shine it upon the righteous in the world to come so which you have laid up for those who fear you which you have performed for those who trust in you perform alludes to the action of concealment it is also written but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings Malachi 320 section 2 when a man is about to go to that world the Zohar give us description what happens when a patient is about to leave this world 5 come and see when a man is about to go to that world and is on his sickbed three messengers come to him he sees there what one cannot see while in this world that day is judgment day when the king asks for his deposit back namely the soul happy is the man who returns the deposit to the king as it was given him that is undamaged if that deposit was soiled with bodily filth what shall he say to the owner of the deposit 6 he lifts up his eyes and sees the angel of death standing before him with his sword drawn in his hand the destroying Angel in charge of breaking that man nothing is harder for the soul than its separation from the body the man does not die until he sees the Shechina through much yearning for the Shechina the soul leaves the body to welcome the Shechina after the soul has left the body what soul can cleave to the Shechina and be received within her these matters have been explained seven after the soul has left the body and it remains spiritless it is forbidden to leave it unburied as written his body shall not remain all night upon the tree but you shall surely bury him that day to barm 2123 for a corpse remaining unburied for 24 hours a day and a night causes the parts of the chariot which is alluded to by that man to weaken and detains the actions of the Holy One blessed be he from being carried out for the Holy One blessed be he may have decreed upon him another incarnation at once on the very day he died in order to help him but as long as the body is not buried the soul does not come before the Holy One blessed be he nor can it be in another body in another incarnation for a soul is not given another body until the first one is buried this resembles a man whose wife died he is not qualified to marry another wife before he buries the first one hence the Torah said his body shall not remain all night upon the tree Eight, another explanation when the soul has left the body and wishes to go to that world it may not enter it until it is given another body of light than it can enter you may derive this from Elijah who had two bodies one in which he was seen by people below and another in which he was seen above among the celestial holy angels as long as the body is not buried the soul suffers and the spirit of defilement is there to dwell upon that body and defile it nine since the spirit of defilement is in readiness to defile the body one must not keep the body for a night because the spirit of defilement is present at night and spreads namely roams throughout the land to find a soulless body to defile it therefore at night it is defiled even more therefore it warned the priest saying there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people they I cross 211 since they are holy the spirit of defilement will not dwell upon them and they shall not be defiled for the spirit of defilement can dwell on a spiritless body ten speak to the priests rabbi it's said speak to the priests in a whisper just as all the services of the priests are done silently so are all their words whispered speak on say means once and again to remind them of their sanctity so that they shall not be defiled for whoever serves in a holy place must be holy in every respect there shall none be defiled for the dead as we explained that a spiritless corpse is unholy and the spirit of defilement dwells upon it for the spirits of defilement long for the bodies of Israel once the spirit of holiness was emptied from them and they come to join a vessel of Holiness namely a body the priests who are doubly holy must not be defiled whatsoever as written because the crown of his Elohim is upon his head Bimid bar 67 and the anointing oil of his Elohim is upon him Vayikra 2112 section 3 running down upon the head running down upon the beard the Zohar explains the flow from Bina the work of the Kohanim and that they have to stay pure 11 he the priest like the priest above is below as written it is like the precious ointment upon the head running down upon the beard the beard of Aaron running down over the hem of his garments Tehillim 1332 this verse has been explained yet the precious ointment upon the head is the oil of supernal holy ointment namely the plenty of Mokin that flows and comes out from the location of the deepest river Bina according to another explanation it flows and comes out of the head to all heads the most concealed among the concealed which is the head of Eric and it is surely Upon the head the head of Adam Kadman primordial man which is Eric Enpin the verse teaches us it is like the precious ointment which is upon the head 12 it is running down upon the beard the precious beard of Eric Enpin as has been explained the beard of Aaron refers to the celestial high priest namely the beard of Zeir Enpin in the secret of Jesus of Zeir Enpin this has already been explained this ointment namely the plenty of Eric Enpin is running down over the hem of his garments of Zeir Enpin for it flows and comes down to the lower beings over the garments of Zeir Enpin similarly the high priest below draws and is crowned by the anointing oil below he corresponds to the supernal high priest Jesus of Zeir Enpin 13 there is a dissimilarity between the beginning and end of this verse since it is written speak to the priests the sons of Aaron and say to them there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people the beginning of the verse is in Plural while the end is in the singular it should have said they shall not be defiled in plural as at the beginning of the verse why there shall none be defiled in the singular he replies the verse speaks about the highest priest namely the high priest above Rabbi Yehuda said yet it is written and he that is the high priest among his brethren Vayikra 2110 this alludes to the high priest above rather than the first verse he answers it is surely so there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people alludes to the highest priest Zeir and while the verse and he that is the high priest among his brethren as we learned speaks of the high priest below as Rabbi Yitzhak said the priest situated below is in the likeness of above and should be in holiness more than all the others as we learned hence the verse spoke of him specifically that he must not
that joy would abound in all directions namely right and left with the lighting of the lamps for those who are performed by the priests so that joy would abound in every direction the kindling of the lamps and incense we have already explained that ointment and perfume incense rejoice the heart Mishlei 279 and of RAI Mahim the section 5 and for his sister a virgin we are reminded of the destruction of Jerusalem and of how God will exact vengeance against it Children of Edom who destroyed it 16 and for his sister a virgin that is near to him. Vayikra 213 the preceding verse says but for his kin that is near to him. Abitu Rabbi Abba opened with the verse who is this that comes from Edom with crimson garments from Batsra. Yashia 631 who is this that comes from Edom means that the Holy One blessed be he will be garbed with a garment of vengeance upon Edom for their ruining his temple and burning his holy and exiling the congregation of Israel among the nations he will take revenge upon them forever until all the mountains in the world will fill with the dead of the nations and the birds of the sky will be summoned upon them to feed upon their cadavers every wild beast will feed on them for twelve months and the birds of the sky for seven years until the land will not bear their disgrace this is the meaning of for Hashem has a sacrifice in Batsra and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. Yashia 346 until this rhyment of Vengeance will be defiled by those killed. This is the meaning of and I have stained all my rhyme. Yeshayah 633 17 with crimson garments from Batra because legions of the world came out from Batra to wage war against Jerusalem. They started to burn the holy wall. The children of Edom were demolishing the walls and uprooting cornerstones. This is the meaning of remember O Hashem against the children of Edom the day of Jerusalem when they said raise it, raise it to its very foundations. Tehillim 1377 18. This one that is glorious in his apparel. Yeshayah 631 that I as with the garments of vengeance he will don striding in the greatness of his strength. If it's striding refers to breaking as written, the people fall under you. Tehillim 456 Israel said to Isaiah, Who is he that will accomplish so much? He opened with the verse I that speak in righteousness. Yeshayah 631 he that is mighty to save, but he of whom it is written, he loves righteousness and judgment. Tehillim 335. Actual righteousness, namely Malchut, that is called righteousness, and he is mighty to save nineteen. Wherefore, all that because they caused the congregation of Israel to lie in the dust in exile and fall to the ground, as written, the virgin of Israel is fallen, she shall no more rise. Amos 52, for that the Holy One blessed be, he will don for them garments of vengeance to defile them with many dead, as written, and I have stained all my rhyme. Yeshayah 633, 20, and wherefore, all that sins. It is written, and for his sister, a virgin that is near to him, and who has had no husband, who is the Holy Sheshana sister to Zeir, and who is not the portion of Esau, and was not the lot of him, of whom it says, a cunning hunter, a man of the field, bear she 2527, for her he may be defiled. Vayikra 213, for her sake, with those garments of vengeance that will be defiled among the multitude of the dead mentioned before, therefore, it is written, for her he may be defiled for her sake, because she is lying in exile in the dust and he wants to raise her. This is the meaning of arise shine for your light is come. Yeshayah 601 section 6 They shall not make baldness on their head. Rabbi Yossi tells us why the priest below must be without any blemish. 21 They shall not make baldness head. Yikresha on their head. Vayikra 215 Rabbi Yossi said what is the reason Yikresha is spelled with hay at the end. He answers that supernal ointment the plenty of Abba is the holy. Anointing oil that consecrates all seven days. Jesus be retired for at Netzach Hadjizit and Malchut as we learned from the words. For seven days shall he consecrate you. Vayikra 833 That supernal oil is removed from him and baldness is made on him if he blemishes his head for the head of the high priest. Namely the first three Sfirat of Zeir and is the supernal oil the lights of Abba. Hence the priest below must not demonstrate any blemish in himself as we have already learned for corresponding. To the priest above his own deeds blemish him hence make baldness is spelled with hay section 7 for seven days shall he consecrate you this section correlates the 70 years of exile with the seven days of consecration and the seven spirot rabbi abba says that the high priest above blemishes the supernal hay if the high priest below blemishes the lower hay 22 he opened with the verse when hashem brought back the captivity of zion we were like men in a dream tehillim 1261 when hashem brought back was said during the exile in babylon though they spent only 70 years in that exile is written that after 70 years are accomplished at babylon i will take heed of you your maya 2910 and we were like men in a dream what is like men in a dream the friends remarked that some dreams last 70 years 23 come and see it is written for seven days shall he consecrate you vayikra 833 what are these seven days it has been said that the Uppermost place that includes all the other six, namely Bina, that includes in a chesed beurtai for a netzach and yezid is called seven days and also called repentance. We learned that whoever fasts on Shabbat, his verdict of seventy years standing is torn up. Seventy years are the seven facets of the king, namely the seven svarot chesed beurtai for a netzach yezid and malchut, each including ten, thus amounting to seventy, even though they are unanimously agreed against him. The verdict is torn up for what reason? Because whoever fasts is attached to that day which includes them all, namely Bina, that is called seven and is called repentance. For that reason, when he is attached to that, he is attached to all seventy years when he repents, and any verdict in any of them is therefore torn up. Therefore, assuredly, there are seventy years in a dream. Twenty-four. Similarly, the priest is crowned with seven, which are Bina, that is called seven days. If the priest blemishes his head, that seven Bina. The whole of all seven days Jesus be retired for at Netzach Hadiyazid and Malchut makes him bald from all that overall holiness that dwells on that priest. They were therefore careful not to make baldness on their heads because this will render them defective in all seven Sfirot. Thus the priest needs to abide in perfection more than all the others and all the more so the most supernal. The high priest 25 Rabbi Abba said the lower hay in here and the supernal hay in there the high priest. The highest blemish is the supernal hay which is Bina as written upon whose head the anointing oil was poured and that is consecrated. Vayikra 2110 and that is consecrated refers to Bina as written for seven days shall he consecrate you. The seven days refer to Bina the upper hay of Yudhi Hay Any other priest creates a blemish in the lower hay of Yudhi Hay Bab Malchut as written they shall not make baldness on their head. Vayikra 215 followed by and not profane the name of their. Elohim of it six this name is known as Malchut the lower hay hence it is written and he that is the high priest among his brethren upon whose head the anointing oil was poured and that is consecrated to put on the garments this is as we said that the anointing oil indicates the bounty of Abba that he receives by I am a the upper hay since he is holy in the likeness of above it is written neither shall he go out of the sanctuary of it twelve just like Abba and I am a whose union is uninterrupted. Section 8 Hashem righteousness belongs to you Rabbi Abba says that Israel is blessed because God gave them the Torah of truth he tells us that righteousness is truth overall like the illumination of the countenance and the joy of all confusion the other side is shame and the departure of truth the high priest must have a beautiful and welcoming countenance 26 Rabbi Abba opened with the verse Hashem righteousness belongs to you but to us confusion of faces as at the stage of it. Men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem Daniel 97 Happy are Israel whom the Holy One blessed be he has chosen above all the heathen nations for the love of them he gave them the Torah of truth to know the path of the Holy King whoever is occupied with the Torah it is as if he is occupied with the Holy One blessed be he for the whole Torah is the name of the Holy One blessed be he therefore whoever deals in the Torah is occupied with his name and whoever is away from the Torah is far from the Holy One blessed be he 27 come and see Hashem righteousness belongs to you resembles the words yours Hashem is the greatness and the power I of Rahim 2911 which are his attributes Jesus be retired for at Netzach Hadiyazid and Malchut righteousness is also the attribute of Malchut what is righteousness it is a place to which all shining faces are attached and which is attached to all the Sfirot of Zeir and which dwell in it that is Malchut in which are all the Sfirot of Zeir and but to us confusion of faces is the place which all shining faces shy away from which is the other side righteousness Malchut is truth overall like the illumination of the countenance and the joy of all confusion the other side is sh
Her virginity Rabbi Shimon speaks about the verse and lo he has laid accusing speakers and they shall find him a hundred shekels of silver because he has brought out an evil name upon the virgin of Israel 29 and he shall take a wife in her virginity by cross 2113 Rabbi Shimon opened with and lo he has laid accusing speakers and they shall find him a hundred shekels of silver because he has brought out an evil name upon the virgin of Israel Devarim 2217 to 19 he asks yet she is the virgin of her father or husband why does it state here the virgin of Israel which means a virgin the daughter of Jacob called Israel and he answers this is the meaning of ask your father and he will recount it to you your elders and they will tell you Devarim 327 that refers to Israel your father whose daughter Dinah went out to see the daughters of the land and that incident occurred since the verse speaks about spreading an evil name it mentions the virgin of Israel the same case as that of it. Daughter of Israel Dinah here too the priest who represents the likeness of above shall take a wife in her virginity namely who will not go outside from her courtyard from time to time we have already learned this he makes an analogy between her virginity and the virgin of Israel so she will not go out as happened to the virgin of Israel section 10 he has given food to those who fear him Rabbi Shimon says that God gives sustenance to the righteous who are of his household anyone who rises at midnight to study Torah is considered to be part of his household and will inherit the earth 30 Rabbi Shimon was walking along the way with Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shiski or Rabbi Shimon opened with he has given food to those who fear him he will ever be mindful of his covenant Tehillim 1115 he has given food to those who fear him refers to the righteous who fear the Holy One blessed be he for whoever fears him is considered of the household of it. King and it is written of him happy is the man who fears Hashem Tehillim 1121 31 he asks what is the meaning of he has given food to those who fear him and answers that this resembles the word she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household Mishlei 3115 since the righteous are his household they receive this food from this we learn that whoever studies Torah at night and rises at midnight when the congregation of Israel Malchud awakens to arrange the house for the king that is to draw the illumination of Chakma for him in accordance with through wisdom a house is built Mishlei 243 such a man takes his part with her and is considered to be of the household of the king he is given daily from the allotments of the house this is the meaning of she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens food refers to the illumination of Chakma while portion also lies that they will not draw from above. Downwards who are her household those who join her to study Torah at night are considered her house her household members hence it is written he has given food to those who fear him 32 he asks what is food and answers it is real food let pray for she devours and takes by force which alludes to judgments that are revealed with Chakma for she receives from a lofty faraway place as written she brings her food from afar Mishlei 3114 that is Chakma as written I said I will be wise. But it was far from me Kehillah 723 who obtains this food this is shown by the end of the verse he will ever be mindful of his covenant Tehillim 1115 this means whoever strives in the Torah to partake of it at night as the Torah is called the covenant moreover the Holy One blessed be he has another certain supernal righteous who is yet of Zeir and this man joins him to bestow upon Malchut and both inherit the congregation of Israel as written righteous they shall inherit the land for every Yeshayah 6021 this means that the righteous man who is occupied with the Torah at night and the supernal righteous will inherit Malchut called earth section 11 neither shall he profane his seed among his people Rabbi Shimon speaks about the precept against ejaculating semen in vain and says it is even more important for priests to obey because they must be holy in every respect Rabbi Shimon says that Israel are happy because when they went into exile it Sheshana went with them in the end God will return from exile with Israel 33 he continued with the verse neither shall he profane his seed among his people for I Hashem do sanctify him Vayikra 2115 come and see whoever ejaculates semen in vain is not worthy of beholding the face of the Sheshana and is considered evil as written for you are not an elf that has pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you Tehillim 55 this refers to one who emits it by hand or through another unworthy woman you may argue that one who ejaculates it within a woman who does not conceive I is also considered to be emitting semen in vain this is not so but only those we mentioned 34 a man should therefore ask the Holy One blessed be he to summon him a worthy vessel that is a worthy woman so as not to blemish his seed whoever ejaculates his seed in an unworthy vessel blemishes his seed woe to him who causes damage in his seed and if this is true for other people it is much more so to him. Priest that is below corresponding to a likeness of above in utmost holiness it is therefore written neither shall he profane his seed among his people 35 he asks what is the meaning of among his people seeing that it is written before a widow or a divorced woman or a profaned or a harlot these shall he not take Vayikra 2114 and neither shall he profane his seed among his people it should have said among them why among his people he answers this means this would be a disgrace among his people a blemish among his people hence it is written but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife a bit of his own people assuredly everything is in the likeness of above for I Hashem do sanctify him what is sanctify him he answers it is I who daily sanctify him hence he must not blemish his seed and no blemish must be in him for I Hashem do sanctify him as I wish to sanctify him so that he shall be sanctified in every respect and so that the holy will make use of what is holy 36 come and see the holy one blessed be he will make use of the priest who is holy when he comes to serve since the holy one blessed be he will use the priest who is holy the latter will be helped by a pure man who is sanctified by his own purity these are the levites another man namely the priest will be helped by another holy man the levite so they will all be in holiness to serve the holy one blessed be he happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come as written of them and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine Vayikra 2026 20, Israel are separated by holiness in every respect so as to serve the holy one blessed be he this is the meaning of sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for I am Hashem your Elohim of it 737 he opened again and said salvation belongs to Hashem your blessings be upon your people Selah 39 salvation belongs to Hashem we have so learned happy are Israel for wherever they were exalted. Shechina went into exile with them when Israel will come out of exile whose salvation shall this be that of Israel or of the Holy One blessed be he seeing that the Shechina as well will go out of exile we have explained it in relation to several verses here salvation belongs to Hashem surely when will that be when your blessings be upon your people when the Holy One blessed be he cares for Israel with blessings so as to take them out of exile and help them then salvation belongs to Hashem because the Shechina will go out of exile we therefore learn that the Holy One blessed be he will return from exile with Israel this is the meaning of then Hashem your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you Devarim 303 turn can be construed to mean he will return with Israel from exile section 12 he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife Moses the faithful shepherd explains why the high priest must marry a virgin Israel need to send their gifts to God by the hand of a wholesome man Rai Mahan the faithful shepherd 38 but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife Vayikra 2114 the faithful shepherd opened and said this commands the high priest to marry a virgin as said a widow or a divorced woman or a profane or a harlot these shall he not take but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife he asks why is it necessary for him to marry only an unblemished virgin and answers a woman is a cup of blessing which if tasted is blemished that is it alludes to Malchut called the cup of blessing a priest who offers a sacrifice before Hashem must be whole and unblemished whole and unblemished in limbs because blemishes make priests unfit he should be wholesome in body whole in his wife so as to fulfill in him the verse you are all fair my love there is no blemish in you sure Hashirim 4739 for the sacrifice is a gift Israel need to send their gift to the king by a Wholesome man as they are the opposite of the other side to which they would send a gift by an appointed man who is blemished as written one law for Hashem and the other law for Azazel Vayikra 168 for other Elohim are all blemished on the northern side according to the meaning of out of the north the evil shall break forth your 114 in this way most even households are defective in respect to their wife who is a ruin Lilith blemished etc 40 the faithful shepherd is Bob filled with Yudh
Kun are among my helpers and of our AI may in the section 13 whoever he be of your seat in their generations that has any blemish. Rabbi Itzhak tells us that a blemish on a man testifies that he has no faith and is therefore unfit to serve in the holy place. Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Shimon test a passerby who has a defect in one eye asking him who is the happiest man in the world. They find that the passerby is not a faithful man because he places all importance on. Wealth Rabbi Lazer talks about the written Torah and the oral Torah that cannot dwell on a blemished place when Zer and Ben and Malchut are united everything is whole all is one and no place is defective and the congregation of Israel is called whole the priest must be unblemished and so must the offering Rabbi Yossi says that when the dead rise from the dust at the resurrection they will rise with the same body they had and God will heal them we read of the ceremonial importance of it. Days in the timing of some events Rabbi Shia says that God first offered the Torah to the children of Esau and the earth trembled until it was given to Israel 41 whoever he be of your seed in their generations that has any blemish Vayikra 2117 Rabbi Yitzhak said the reason I ask because he is blemished and whoever is blemished is unfit to serve in the holy place we explain that a blemished man has no faith to which that blemish bears testimony this is truer in a priest who has to be whole and faithful more than the rest we have already explained this 42 Rabbi Lazar was sitting in his father-in-law's room saying that a remedy must be found for the leak in the room because the rain was leaking through the roof in the meanwhile a man passed who had a defect in one eye his father-in-law said let us seek advice from him Rabbi Lazar said he is blemished and therefore not trustworthy his father-in-law said let us test him they approached to ask him he asked him whoever is the happiest in the world that man said a rich man I asked the happiest in the world but when taken away from his wealth woe to him I worry for him most of all since if he loses his wealth he is the most miserable man in the world Rabbi Lazar said from his words I understand he is neither faithful nor trustworthy since he thinks the rich man rather than the righteous to be the happiest come and see the holy one blessed be he said that whatever man he be that has a blemish he shall not approach Ibn 18 for supernal holiness does not dwell on a blemish place 43 he opened his discourse saying for Torah and for testimony surely they will speak according to this word Yeshaya 820 for Torah and for testimony he asks what is the Torah and what is the testimony and answers that the Torah is the written Torah Zeir and while the testimony is the oral Torah Malchut the oral Torah does not dwell on a blemish place because it is established on the written Torah since Malchut is Built by Zeir Anpin which is whole it is written bind up the testimony seal the Torah among my disciples Ibit 16 bind up the testimony refers to the oral Torah since there in Malchut the bundle of life is bound and with the testimony the knot of life is tied from above from Zeir Anpin so that all will be 144 from there downwards that is underneath Malchut roots and paths are separated and from there the ways diverge throughout the world as written and from hence it was parted and branched into four streams Beersheet 21045 seal the Torah refers to the sealing of the Torah the written Torah which is Zeir Anpin where does this happen among my disciples the prophets called Tot of Hashem Netzach and Hot is written and he set up the right pillar and called its name Jashin which is Netzach and he set up the left pillar and called its name Boaz I Melashim 721 which is hot from their ways extend to the faithful prophets who receive from Netzach and Hot. And these support the body Zeir Anpin with his six lights. This is the meaning of his legs are pillars of marble. Sure Hasherim 515 is legs. The secret of Netzach and Hot are pillars of Zeir Anpin that has six firot in him. Everything is supported only by means of perfection and all their holiness dwells on them only when they are in holiness. For when Zeir Anpin and Malchut are united with each other, all is whole, all is one, and no place is rendered defective. Hence the congregation of Israel is called whole as written and Melchized the king of Shalem let whole. Beersheet 1418 is Melchized the king Malchut and the king of wholeness and also in Shalem also is his tabernacle. Tehillim 763 which refers to Malchut 46. Therefore everything dwells only on a wholesome place and therefore whatever man he be that has a blemish he shall not approach. Vayikra 2118 similarly a blemished sacrifice shall not be offered since it is written it shall not be acceptable for you. Vayikra 2220 you may say that the Holy One blessed be he only dwells in a broken place in a broken vessel as written yet with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Yeshayah 5715 he answers such a place is the most wholesome because one humbles himself so as to allow the loftiest to dwell on him supernal loftiness such a one is whole but it does not say I dwell on a bit a blind man or a lame or he that has a flat nose or anything superfluous. Vayikra 2118 but with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit for the Holy One blessed be he raises him who humbles himself. 47 therefore the priest that is below as the likeness of above needs to be more whole in every respect than anyone else and show no blemish the priests are therefore admonished whoever he be of your seed in their generations that has any blemish. 48 he continued with and if you offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if you offer a lame or sick animal is that not evil Malachi 18 he asks was it it? Holy One, blessed be he who said it is not evil then it is good and he answers the end of the verse shows that Israel used to appoint blemished priests in those days and blemished sacrifices on the altar and to serve in the temple and said what does the Holy One, blessed be he care whether it is this or another it is they who used to say it is not evil and the Holy One, blessed be he answered them with the very words they would use saying Israel you say there is not evil in blemished people. Sacrificing for my worship what does the Holy One, blessed be he care 49 the end of the verse says offer it now to your governor will he be pleased with you or will he show you favor of it if a man among you must make peace with the king and offer him a gift will you send him a defective one or not will he be pleased with you or will he show you favor with that defective gift moreover when you bring before me a blemished man to offer me an offering that offering of yours shall be given. To the dog for surely such a blemished man is defective in every respect defective in faith hence it says whatever man he be that has a blemish he shall not approach 50 rabbi you see said the holy one blessed be he will make Israel whole so they will be whole in every respect and there will be none blemished among them for the world will reach completion during resurrection like the vessels and garments of man which are completion for the body this is why he will perfect them as written and they stand as a garment eo 3814 51 come and see when they will awaken from the dust during resurrection they will rise as they came into the grave if they entered lame or blind they will rise lame or blind namely they will rise with the same garment body so that none would say it is another who was revived into life the holy one blessed be he will then heal them so they will be whole before him and the world will be whole in everything then on that day Hashem shall be one and his Name one Zechariah 14952 When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under its mother. Vayikra 2227 Rabbi Yossi opened with your righteousness is like the great mountains, your laws are a great deep passion. You preserve man and beast. Tehillim 367 We have to examine this verse yet. Come and see righteousness. I as a holy supernal sphere, namely Malchut, like the great mountains, means like the supernal holy mountains called mountains of pure balsam tree. Which are by since Malchut rises to be attached to them above all her judgments become equal since this judgment contains no mercy. Therefore, your laws are a great deep law, which is mercy descends to that great Malchut to perfect the world and have compassion over everything and executes judgment with mercy to mitigate the world. 53 Since it is mercy, Hashem, you preserve man and beast, namely equally in relation to man and beast. It has been explained as referring to a man who behaves. Like a beast, but man and beast means the same law applies for men and beasts for men, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Beersheet 1712 for beasts, it shall be seven days under its mother, and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire to Hashem. Vayikra 2227, so that they will spend at least one Shabbat. This has already been explained. 54 Rabbi Shia opened Hashem when you did go out of Seir, when you did march out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Shoftim 54, come and see happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come, since the Holy One blessed be he chose them and they cleave to him and are called holy, a holy nation, which is an aspect of Bina. Moreover, he even raised them to a supernal grade called holiness, which is
Called throne, may a thousand such nations perish. The covenant of the Torah shall not appear before them. This is the meaning of Hashem when you did go out of Seir, when you did march out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled. Surely for the Torah is given only to him who has the holy covenant in him. Whoever teaches the Torah to the uncircumcised is false to two covenants. The covenant of the Torah as the Torah is called covenant as written, if I have not appointed my covenant, Yermeah 3325. And the covenant of the righteous and the congregation of Israel for the Torah was given to that place the covenant and to no other the foreskin section 14 it is forbidden to teach Torah to the uncircumcised Rabbi Abba tells us that anyone who teaches the Torah to the uncircumcised is false to the Torah false to the prophets and false to the writings we learn how a circumcised man can attain the light of the Ruash and the Neshama and the Chaya 57 Rabbi Abba said Whoever teaches the Torah to the uncircumcised is false to three high places he is false to the Torah false to the prophets false to the writings he is false to the Torah as written and this is the Torah which Moses set before the children of Israel the Barim 444 and not before the uncircumcised he is false to the prophets as written and all your children shall be taught of Hashem Yeshayah 5413 not others it is also written seal the Torah among my disciples Yeshayah 816 among them and not among others he is false to the writings as written for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a Torah in Israel Tehillim 785 and surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name Tehillim 14014 who are the righteous they are the righteous Yezid of Zeir and the congregation of Israel which is Malchut called righteousness for whoever is not circumcised or has not entered their covenant will not give thanks to his holy name which at the study of the Torah Rabbi Shia said Once the Holy One blessed be he was revealed on Mount Sinai to give the Torah to Israel the land abetted from its trembling and was quiet hence the earth feared and was still Tehillim 76958 come and see when a man is born no force from above is appointed over him until he is circumcised once he is circumcised the awakening of the spirit namely the light of Nefesh was roused over him from above if he merits to be occupied with the Torah an additional awakening is stirred over him it Light of Barash if he merits to perform the commandments of the Torah an additional awakening is roused over him which is the light of Neshama if he was worthy to be married begot children and taught them the ways of the Holy King then he is whole in every respect because he attained the light of Shaya these four levels are from the four worlds Atzala, Priya, Yitzara, and Asiya and apply to each individual world 59 but when an animal is born whatever force is in it at its end it has at the hour of its birth which is appointed over it hence it is written when a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth Vayikra 2227 for whatever it possesses at the end it has when it is born section 15 then it shall be seven days under its mother we are told that an animal accepted for a burnt offering shall be at least seven days old so that it will have experienced one Shabbat we learn about why man must undergo one Shabbat before his circumcision the two. Blood spoken of are the blood of the Pascal sacrifice and the blood of circumcision and the blood of circumcision is itself two bloods through which one attains the life of the world to come sixty then it shall be seven days under its mother Vayikra 2227 in order for that force appointed over IT to settle upon it and exist in it, it will exist in it when one Shabbat has rested on it otherwise it does not stay for people only exist through the light of Shabbat is written and by the seventh day Elohim ended his work which he had done Bereshit 22 later when this force exists in it, it is written it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire to Hashem through the existence of the one Shabbat it experienced 61 as for man by undergoing one Shabbat the awakening of this world and his force namely the animal Nefesh are established after he is circumcised an awakening of the supernal spirit the secret of the Nefesh as mentioned occurs in the congregation of Israel. Malchut passes over him and sees him with a holy imprint, then she is roused towards him, and the spirit of that holy world dwells on him. This is written in, and saw you weltering in your blood, I said to you in your blood, live Yashiskal 166, namely two blood 62. You may say that when Israel went out of Egypt, there were among them the blood of the Pascal sacrifice and the blood of circumcision, then it is written in your blood, live, namely the two bloods, but what of in your blood in this? Case there is only the blood of circumcision, he answers, there are two, one of circumcision, and one of the uncovering of the corona. The blood of circumcision is of the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, while that of the uncovering is of the righteous, the foundation of the world, namely is it of Zeir, and through these two bloods, one attains the life of the world to come. This is the meaning of in your blood, live, section 16, each letter of the name is it. Perfection of the whole name we learn from Rabbi Shimon how each letter in the holy name reflects the perfection of the name and the inner meaning of the seven days in Vav and the seven days in Yud Hay 63 Rabbi Shimon said the counsel or secret of Hashem is with them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenant Tehillim 2514 the secret of Hashem is with them that fear him refers to the congregation of Israel namely Malchut called the secret of Hashem and he will reveal to them his covenant refers to the righteous the foundation of the world namely Yezid of Zeir and that is called covenant both are joined as 164 Yud has in IT three letters which are overall perfection the beginning of everything namely Chakma called beginning Is Yud which is the most superior above all the letters of Yud Hay Vav and all the Svirat Vav within Yud Vav Dalad Is the central column Zeir and which is perfection in every direction since it completes the right end. The left it completes namely is a root to all the spirits and faith depends on it which is Malchut the Dalit in the Yudia it is the garden the bundle of life namely Malchut this letter Dalit is small since Malchut is the secret of small letters and is overall perfection since Malchut completes all the Svirat 65 the letter Yud is closed on all sides when it emerges that is is revealed it does so like a king with his soldiers and then the Yud returns on its own matters are concealed within it and come out to be revealed it both conceals and discloses 66 Hay of the name Yudia Vav Hay is overall perfection above and below we have learned Hay is known to be by the Aleph in the fully spelled Hay is Yud Vav Dalit since Aleph is formed with Vav in between Yudia above and Dalit below it completes the three letters at the top that are concealed in Yud of Yudia Hay Vav Hay which is fully spelled as Yudia Vav Dalit this has already been explained and it is the same thing since it. Wholeness of the holy name is wholeness above and below. This is why he takes Allah for its full spelling when it is crowned. 67 Come and see each letter of the holy name reflects the perfection of the whole name. Yud of Yudi Hay has already been explained to be overall perfection. Hay of Yudi Hay is overall perfection even when it is not fully spelled with Allah but with Hay only since we learned that there is overall perfection in the shape of Hay since its character is formed. With Yudi Vav and Dalit which is overall perfection. Vav of Yudi Hay is overall perfection both ways either fully spelled or as it is Vav Hay namely Hay of Yudi Hay connected with Vav of Yudi Hay is greater perfection that crowns all the world since Vav Hay are the secret of Zeir and Pen and Malchud when united thus it is all one as each of the letters of Yudi Hay indicates the perfection in Yudi Hay the friends have already explained the 68 Come and see. Then it shall be Hay Yud Hay Yud Hay seven days under its mother Vayikra 2227 the letters of Vayikra were imprinted in accordance with the secret of Yud Vav Dalad Hay Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hay Aleph since Vayikra is spelled with the same letters as Yud Hay Vav Hay the seven days were included in Vav Hay together since Vav Hay which are Zeir and Pen and Malchut are the seven Svirat Shizid Biru Tiferet Net Sash Had Yizid and Malchut Yud Hay are seven days since Yud is one including them all since it includes all the letters of the name Hay is three it with its two children since it includes within itself Dalad and Vav Zeir and Pen and Malchut and two fathers are included in the one son namely the Vav within the Hay these are the two columns Shizid and Biru thus they are five by Zeir and Pen and Malchut Shizid and Biru and Malchut which is included within Zeir and Pen Vav includes within it a female daughter which is Malchut which is one thus they are six so the upper Hay of Yud Hay Vav Hay includes the whole six namely by the Zeir and Pen and Malchut Chisit and Gvira and Malchut which is included within Zeir and Pen with Yud Hay that is together with the Yud there are seven this is the
Seventy nations, which is the secret of she that has many children, has become wretched. Seventy come and see these seven days of Sukkot, the secret of Chesed, Burat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut rise high up since the illumination of Chakma within them shines from below upwards, while those seventy bullocks from which the seventy nations are nourished descend lower and lower as the nations draw them from above down as is their womb, thus sinking them down. This was stated in though you do soar aloft like the eagle, and though you do set your nest among the stars from there, I will bring you down, says Hashem Obadiah 14. But Yisrael rise from below upwards as written, and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Bereshit 2814, and, and I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Bereshit 264. In this way they rise from the dust of the earth to the stars of heaven, they then rise above all and cleave to the loftiest place as written, but you that did cleave of Hashem, your Elohim Devarim 44 section 17 and its young the rabbis speak about the proscription against slaughtering the mother animal and its offspring on the same day we learn that a fast is good for averting a bad dream as long as the fast is on the same day an action below awakens a similar action above 71 and whether it be cow lit ox or you you shall not kill it him and its young they I cross 2228 rabbi you see said the meaning follows its Aramaic translation her and her young instead of he and his young for it is the mother's way to know her young and her young follows her and not the father and we do not know who his father is 72 you shall not kill it and its young both in one day rabbi Yehuda asks for the reason if you say it is because it is distressing to the animal we can slaughter one in one house and the other in another or at different times he said to him some permit that but it is not so but scripture forbids specifically in one day 73 come and see we learn that a fast is good for averting a bad dream as fire for consuming flax that is for getting rid of IT the fast is valuable only on the same day and not in any other day the reason is that every day below has another supernal day ruling over it we learn that when one is fasting to avert a dream the decree is annulled before the day is over if he postpones it to another day then it is under the jurisdiction of another day and no day intermingles with its neighbor day similarly there is a supernal day above appointed over every day and one should be careful not to damage any day so that it will not remain defective in relation to other days 74 we learn that an action below awakens an action above if a man performs a worthy action below the force above also awakens if a man does kindness in the world kindness awakens above and dwells on that day which is crowned with it for his sake if a man acts mercifully below he arouses mercy upon that Day which is crowned with mercy for him that day then stands to protect him in his time of need. 75 The same applies for the opposite case. If a man acts cruelly, he rouses the same in that day and renders that day defective, then that day stands over him to be cruel to him and destroy him. The measure with which man measures will be measured out to him. 76 We learn that cruelty was omitted from Israel more than the rest of the nations, and no act of cruelty will appear among them. For many I'd once stand over man to denounce him for that action. Happy is he who displays a worthy act below because the awakening of something corresponding above wholly depends on that act. Section 18 There was corn in Egypt. Rabbi Shimon tells us that when there is to be a famine, God decrees it himself rather than delegating the announcement to one of his messengers. A man who is full must not show it so as not to be seen rejecting the word of God who decreed it. Famine 77 Rabbi Shimon opened with the verse Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Bereshit 421 This verse contains the secret of wisdom and we have to examine it because its beginning and end contradict each other for in the beginning it says Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt and at the end Jacob said to his sons Why do you look at one another? If there is corn in Egypt cannot they look at each other? What is the connection? 78 He answers but come and see. When the Holy One blessed be he wanted to sentence the world to famine he does not deliver this through a crier to the angels for a crier pronounces all other punishments in the world before they enter it but this one of famine is not delivered to a crier but the Holy One blessed be he announces it and cries This is the meaning of for Hashem has called for a famine to Melosh 81 from that time other ministers are appointed over the world due to the decree of famine 79 a satiated man. Must not show himself full because he indicates a blemish above and rejects the word of the king who decreed famine. It is as if he removed the king's ministers from their position. Hence Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at or show one another? Which means, Why do you create a defect above and below and deny the king's declaration and all those appointed by the king's crier 80? But behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Go down there, bear sheet 422. There you may seem replete. But do not reject the celestial retinue here. Come and see Jacob had much corn, but he did not want to eat it except when they came back, so his action would not be considered defective. That is so as not to seem full. Section 19. One should raise the right hand over the left. We learned that the blowing of the shofar indicates freedom for everyone. 81. He opened again with an Aaron lifted up his hands towards the people and blessed them. Vayikra 922. We learned that. Hands is spelled without yod and his right hand to teach you s that one should raise the right over the left while you display an action below so that a corresponding act will be awakened above 82 it is written then shall you cause the shofar to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month vayikra 259 he asks why sound the shofar and answers the shofar breaks the fetters of those imprisoned in the chains of enslavement which breaks the power on all slaves for sound is derived from breaking one should display a simple that is straight shofar not curved to indicate freedom to all which that day has brought about it behooves one always to demonstrate a deed below to awaken a corresponding one above hence a shofar is used rather than a horn to indicate whence it comes a place called shofar since a shofar is the secret of bana and a horn the secret of malchut 83 happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come for they know how to cleave to the holy king and raise it. Power from above and draw their master's holiness upon them. Hence it is written, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like to you, Devarim 3329. And but you that did cleave of Hashem, your Elohim, are alive, every one of you, the state of Devarim 44. We are reminded of the two facets of the commandments in the Torah that are remember and keep remembering is doing as the mentioned below causes the action above introduction by Rai Mahim the faithful shepherd 84, and you shall keep my commandments and do them. Vayikra 2231. We have learned about the commandments of the master of the universe as written, and you shall keep my commandments and do them. He asks if they need keeping when and does this include doing as well, and why does it say and do them? Furthermore, he asks all the commandments in the Torah have two facets that are one, namely remember and keep remember is for the male, namely Zeir and Ben, and keep for the female Malchut, and they are all joined into one. He Ask if keep is for the female why is it written and you shall keep my commandments which indicates all the precepts are only of the aspect of the female namely keeping 85 he answers everything is within this verse and you shall keep refers to keep while and do them refers to remember it all pertains to the same secret remembering is doing whoever mentions something below causes the doing of that secret above there are 613 commandments in the Torah which are the whole of male and female namely remember and keep zeir and and malchut all pertaining to the same secret section 20 I will be hallowed above and below in three grades Rabbi Shimon is talking here about the purpose of sanctity on all levels and grades above and below 86 neither shall you profane my holy name but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel Vayikra 2232 this commandment is to sanctify him daily and raise his sanctity from below upwards namely to Raise main movement from below so as to awaken his sanctity above just as he is holy above thus his sanctity will rise to the fathers who are Shesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben and the children Netzach, Hot, and Yezid of Zeir and Ben called the children of Israel. This is the secret of but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel above the chest and below the chest for I will be hallowed refers to Shesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben called fathers who are above the chest and among the children of Israel refers to Netzach, Hot, and Yezid of Zeir and Ben called the children of Israel who are below the chest of Zeir and Ben above in three grades Shesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben below in three grades Netzach, Hot, and Yezid of Zeir and Ben 87 we have explained about the purpose of sanctity in several places but as there is sanctity in the highest which is supernal Abba, and I am a who are called holiness so there is sanctity in the middle which is Zeir and Ben and Sanctity below in Malchut everything follows
It showed upon the middle grade a certain Bob is imprinted with the bounty of holiness which shines into the holiness it received and it is considered holy with Bob from this light and expansion flows down to Malchud which is the last of the grades namely the last A of Yud Hey Bob Hey once it showed upon the end a certain A of Malchud is imprinted within the light which is called sanctity with an additional A this has already been explained thus when the bounty of sanctity originates in Supernal Abba and IMA it is called holiness head coach when it flows to Zeir and Pene Bob is added and it is called holy head Kadash with Bob when it flows to Malchud Hey is added and it is called sanctity head Kadash with Hey 89 that which is called holy 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 should have said holiness at first because the secret of the first holy means the beginning of everything namely Supernal Abba and IMA which are called holiness since holiness comes from there as mentioned in the previous. Paragraph that holiness is the root of sanctity in that case why is it called holy above if there is no bob there which indicates expansion but why you that does not expand 90 he answers the meaning is as follows assuredly Yisrael sanctify below as the celestial angels do above of whom it is written and one cried to another and said holy Yeshua 63 when Yisrael sanctify they raise from below upwards the supernal glory Zeir and until bob the secret of the highest heavens rises up to supernal Abba and Ima when the heavens rise up that holiness shines on them which is supernal Abba and Ima then Zeir and that rose up is called holy thus the first holy refers to Zeir and or specifically to Zeir and that rose to supernal Abba and Ima later that supernal light shines from supernal Abba and Ima to the throne that is called heavens which is the heavens namely Zeir and that return to their place that is after the heavens Zeir and descended from supernal Abba and Ima with the sanctity they received and came to their place below, which turned into a throne to Abba and Ima. They are settled in that light, and it is then called holy, namely the second holy. The light then descends within Zeir and until a certain celestial righteous receives all who is a precious grade that sanctifies everything below. This is Yezid of Zeir and that pours bounty down to Malchud. Once it receives everything, it is called holy. This is the overall meaning. Thus, the first holy is Zeir and that abides in the place of Abba and Ima and receives from them the second holy is also Zeir and after descending from Abba and Ima into his place, the third holy is Yezid of Zeir and that pours upon Malchud. Ninety-one. Whoever is mindful to meditate on the three times holy is said above on Abba and Ima. Zeir and and Yezid does well. Whoever is mindful to meditate on them in the three grades of the fathers, that is the three columns of Zeir and as one whole to join them through this. Sanctification even if he cannot be mindful of more than that he does well the purpose of all that is to bring down from the highest sanctity down to Malchud so that each person of Israel will receive from it and hallow himself with that sanctity and keep it and spread the expansion of sanctity on himself this is the secret of but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel they I cross 2232 that is the children of Israel will raise me and look to awaken the three types of sanctity above. Then I am Hashem who makes you holy but as Israel receives supernal sanctity 92 when should one hallow himself with the sanctity to include himself within it when one reaches the holy name Hashem Tzvot mentioned after the third holy the secret of Netzach and Hod there lies the secret of I am Hashem who makes you holy I found this as a secret in ancient books but we do not do it this way rather after the three times holy we say Hashem Tzvot only that is we still do not. Include ourselves there then when one reaches the whole earth is full of his glory Yeshua 63 when sanctity is drawn to Malchud one should include himself in that sanctity to be hallowed below in that lower glory Malchud this is the secret meaning of and it shall be sanctified by my glory Shema 2943 then shall he do it specifically at first he should include himself in Malchud the secret of the lower glory in the verse the whole earth is full of his glory which includes the whole earth and all the nations then he should draw sanctity specifically to Israel alone in this way everything will be sanctified and sanctity will extend from Israel to the whole world whatever we do corresponds to the supernal angels who say blessed is the glory of Hashem from his place which is the supernal glory Zeir and then we say may Hashem reign forever which is the lower glory Malchud we also include ourselves in the whole earth is full of his glory which is the lower glory rather then in Hashem Tzvaot which is Netzach and Hot of Zeir and of the aspect of the higher glory as the ancient sages did 93 in his book Rav Yesus Abba says holy 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 refers to the sanctity with which the written Torah Zeir and is hallowed into one that is in his three columns Jesus Bira and Tiferet then facing them they give praise saying blessed is his glory of Hashem referring to the prophets namely Netzach and Hot of Zeir and may Hashem reign forever follows which is Malchut the meaning of this is that we need sanctity of blessing and Malchut to be present in the sanctification so they will all be together sanctity is as it says holy blessing means blessed is the glory of Hashem from his place Malchut is in may Hashem reign forever we should therefore bring everything into completion for that reason one should meditate and be mindful of it every day and of Rai Mahim the section 21 the feast of Hashem Rabbi. It's Hawk says that when God saw the evil that would prevail in the world, he hid the light for the righteous in the world to come. He tells us about the unity that only exists when night and day are united, when light and darkness are united. Since the congregation of Israel is in exile, it is not presently considered to be one, and only when it goes out of exile can it be united with God. 94 Speak to the children of Israel and say to them the feast of Hashem, which you shall proclaim to be. Holy gatherings, these are my feasts. Vayakra 232 Rabbi It's Hawk opened with the verse, and Elohim called the light day. Bear 15 We learned that the light that was present in the beginning used to shine from one end of the world to the other. When the Holy One blessed be, he saw the evil that will live in the world, he hid it for the righteous for the world to come. This is the meaning of, and from the wicked their light is withheld. Eo 3815 and light is sown for the righteous. Talim 9711. 95 Come and see, and Elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night. Yet we learned that let there be light. Bear 13 refers to light that already existed here. If you say that light means day only, that is Zeir and alone. It continues, and the darkness he called night, which is Malchut, that is called night. Zeir and is called light only when with Malchut, that is called night. You may argue that they are separate, not united with each other, so it continues, and there was evening and there was morning. One day of it, five. This means Zeir and is not whole save when united with Malchut, and Malchut is not whole save when united with Zeir and They are called one only when they are joined as one. The Holy One, blessed be he, and the congregation of Israel who are Zeir and and Malchut are called one, but without each other they are not called one. 96 Come and see, since the congregation of Israel is now in exile, she is not considered one, so to speak. When is she? Called one when Israel will go out of exile and the congregation of Israel will return to her place to unite with the Holy One. Blessed be he. This is the meaning of on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one. Zechariah 149. Without each other they are not called one. 97. Come and see the feast of Hashem which you shall proclaim or summon. Namely to summon everything into one place for the feast of Hashem are the secret of Chesed Vira and Tiferet of Zeir and that need to be summoned so they will bestow upon one place Malchut. Thus everything will be complete by the secret of one for when Chesed Vira and Tiferet of Zeir and are united with Malchut they are called one and when Israel will be below one nation in the earth. 2 Samuel 723. He asks it is true that the Holy One blessed be he united with the congregation of Israel. Malchut is called one yet Israel below when established as the likeness of above. How shall they be called one like Zeir and and Malchut? Above 98 and he answers in terrestrial Jerusalem Israel are called one when they dwell in IT once do we know that from the words one nation in the earth assuredly in the earth both in the land of Israel and in Jerusalem they are one nation with it they are called one but not on their own and what one nation is like your people like Israel if it should have sufficed why then is it written and what one nation in the earth is like your people like Israel this is because they are called one only in the earth united with this land as the likeness of above for Zeir and is called one only when united with Malchut called earth for that reason everything is interconnected into one union both above and below happy is the lot of Israel six days shall work be done Vayikra 233 this has already been learned and expl
And what did it say? Namely, of you, my heart has said, for your sake, Zeir and my heart said to the people in the world, and my heart, which is attached to Malchut, admonished them. It said, Seek my face for the supernal king that is seek the face of Zeir and which refers to the king's crowns, Mokin of Zeir and to which he is attached, and they to him they are his name, for they are also the Mokin of Malchut called his name, and his Zeir and and his name Malchut are the same. Hence, David said, Your face, Hashem, I seek as seek Hashem and his strength, seek his face continually. Tehillim 1054 101. Come and see, it is proper for David to recite poetry for the congregation of Israel, Malchut more than anyone in the world, and to convey the words of the congregation of Israel to the king Zeir and because he is attached to her, since David is a chariot to Malchut 100 and to another explanation for of you, my heart has said, Seek my face, it means for your sake, my heart has said to. People in the world seek my face. This refers to the festivals and holidays which are Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin, which are the first three Sfirot of Malchut and her face. Your face Hashem I seek means David summoned all of Chesed Bura and Tiferet to rise to the place called Holiness, which is supernal Abba and IMA called the face of Yud Hey Bobhe Zeir Anpin, for Zeir Anpin receives the Mokin of Abba and IMA, which is Holiness, when he ascends to them in order to crown each one of Chesed Bura and Tiferet with Mokin of Abba and IMA each in its own day, each in its season, so they will all draw from the deepest of the deep from which all springs and streams emerge, namely from supernal Abba and IMA. Hence it is written, Holy Lit Holiness gatherings, gatherings mean summoned for they are summoned to rise to that place called Holiness, which is supernal Abba and IMA to be adorned by it and draw from it so that all will be sanctified together and joy will abound in them 103. Rabbi Abba said holiness gatherings mean summoning of holiness which is supernal Abba and IMA which are Chakma when they are summoned to that place called holiness it is done from the flowing river Banda this is likened to a king who summoned people to his feast and bestowed on them different fiddles and opened before them skins of scented wine that is good to drink for so it ought to be that whoever summons does so to eat and drink so summoned from holiness means that since they are invited to the king's feast they are also invited to the goodly and worthy preserved wine hence it is written summoned from holiness which you shall proclaim in their seasons 104 which you shall proclaim in their seasons it is written and you shall be holy men with men of holiness to me Shema 2230 Israel below are called men of holiness because they are invited from holiness above that is they are invited to receive from the plenty of Abba and IMA called holiness that is received in Malchut the meaning of the verse which you shall proclaim in their seasons is you men of holiness below invite those festivals which are Chesed Bura and Tiferet in their season you should then prepare a meal and rejoice because it befits you since you are called men of holiness everyone will be invited from all aspects from holiness above Abba and Ima and from below from Malchut by Israel who receive from Malchut 105 another explanation of these are the feasts of Hashem what are the feasts of Hashem Rabbi Shimon said the festivals are from Hashem namely from Zeir and to whom there is attachment both from below upwards and from above downwards all are attached to him and all are adorned so as to be attached together to the king's bond the reason is that just as the king Zeir and inherits Abba and Ima is united with that holiness and is crowned with them so are all those who are attached to the king namely the festivals that are attached to Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and have to reach that supernal place called Holiness Abba and Ima so that all will be joined as one therefore they are called the Feast of Hashem and then Holy Gatherings lit summoned from Holiness through which they can be crowned by the King 106 which you shall proclaim Israel have two portions from the side of the King Zeir and from the illumination of Chakma in him they have a supernal share in him as written by you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day Devarim 44 and for Hashem's portion is his people Devarim 329 from the supernal side of Holiness Israel have a supernal share in it as written and you shall be men of Holiness to me and Israel is Holiness to Hashem your Mayah 23 Hashem therefore said you are worthy of summoning them the holidays and arrange before them joy and a feast and rejoice in them 107 whoever invites someone to him should display joy and welcoming countenance and decorate the path of the guest like a king who invited a precious guest he told his household people every other day you were each at home one doing his craft one traveling with his merchandise and another walking to his field this day of mine is an exception you are all invited to my joy for i have just invited a lofty precious guest i do not want you to do your work handle merchandise or be in your field but all of you come to rejoice as in my day prepare yourself to receive that guest with welcoming countenance joy and singing and prepare for him a delectable feast so he will be invited by me in every respect that is so he will enjoy on my side and on yours 108 so did the holy one bless be he say to Israel, my children every other day you are dealing with your work and with merchandise except in my day i have invited now a high and precious guest invite him prepare for him superior meals and set tables as befits the day of mine therefore scripture says which you shall proclaim or call in their seasons 109 come and see when Israel below rejoice in those festivals praise the Holy One blessed be he set tables and ready themselves with glorious garments the supernal angels say why do Israel do this the Holy One blessed be he said I have a precious guest this day the angel says is it not yours from the place called holiness he said to them are not Israel holiness they are called holiness they are worthy of inviting my guest once from my aspect since they are devoted to me and once from the side of holiness as written Israel is holiness to Hashem since Israel are called holiness then it is their guest surely because the guest is summoned from holiness as written holy gatherings lit summoned from holiness they all started saying happy is the people that is in such a case tale of 14,415 1103 and no more are summoned from holiness these are the feast of unleavened bread the holiday of Shavuot and the holiday of Sukkot Rabbi Abba. Said to him is not Shabbat called from holiness he said to him no for two reasons the one is that it is surely considered to be holiness no less than the festivals as written you shall keep the Shabbat therefore for it is holiness to you Shema 3114 the other is that Shabbat is not called from holiness because Shabbat receives the inheritance of holiness and is not called hence all are called from holiness are attached to Shabbat and adorn themselves with it through this holiness the seventh day is adorned Shabbat therefore is not called from holiness 111 Shabbat resembles the son who comes to the house of his father and mother and eats and drinks whenever he wants to Abba and Ima do not have to invite him this is likened to a king who had an only son beloved by him he gave him a companion who would protect him and keep him company the king said it will be well to invite my son's friends and show them my love and honor so he invited those friends but there is no need to invite my son but he comes in to eat and drink in his father's house whenever he wants to this is the meaning of who is like you Hashem among the Elim who is like you glorious in holiness Shema 1511 glorious in holiness surely means as a son helped by his fathers that is Zeir and already rose to Abba and Ima and became like him as in Shabbat he is then glorious in holiness instead of summoned from holiness 112 six days shall work be done Vayikra 233 he asks what are these six days Rabbi you see said it is written for six days Hashem made heaven and earth Shema 2011 and not in six days we have explained that each day did its work for which reason they are called days of work they are the six supernal days Jesus Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yizid from which all the works of creation were performed each one in its own day Jesus in the first Bura in the second etc 113 Rabbi Itzhak said if it is so and they are the secret of the six Farah Jesus Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yizid why are they called weekdays let secular days if they are the holy Farah of Zeir and Rabbi Yusi said the world is led by their messengers namely by the six Farah Jesus Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yizid of Metatron the angel hence they are called secular because Metatron is secular 114 Rabbi Shia said since it is permitted to work on them they are not considered holiness even though they are the secret of Jesus Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yizid of Zeir. And for those who are not considered holiness are considered secular the friends have composed the Havdalah lit separation between the holy and the secular he asks what does Havdalah have to do with it were they ever intermingled and he answers holiness is on its own not
punishing people had in his care people who should be put to death and people who should be flogged but for the glory of the king's joy he disregarded his punishments and kept the king's joy so as not to inflict pain on anyone 117 so is that they should the feast of joy of the king with the queen who are Zeir and Pen and Malchut and the joy of Abba and I am a the higher and lower beings rejoice in it everyone has joy and have no pain in it it is therefore written and call the Shabbat a delight. Yeshua 5813 what is a delight he answers delight only exists above where supernal holiness dwells namely in supernal Abba and I am a is written and shall you delight yourself in live above Hashem above 14 namely above Zeir and Pen for that delight is above Hashem namely in Abba and I am a that are above Zeir and Pen that day Shabbat which is the feast of joy of the king is adorned with that crown of delight from supernal Abba and I am a this is the meaning of and call the Shabbat a delight which is not. The case in other days section 23 the third meal of Shabbat on the holidays Eve the rabbis discuss the importance of the meals on Shabbat and on holidays and what to do when they fall together we are reminded that one must not talk about business or unimportant matters on Shabbat Rabbi Yitzhak says that one must remember the Shabbat through wine that equates to the wine of Torah 118 on that day it behooves the king's children to prepare three meals and set the table in honor of the king as we explained when a feast happens on it of the three festivals or a holiday Rosh Hashanah one must not set two tables each meal one for Shabbat and one for the guest the holiday since it is written for he did eat continually at the king's table two Shmuel 913 for the king's table suffices to the coming guest hence one should set a whole table for the king from which he gives to the guest 119 Rabbi Lazer said when a guest day holiday happens at Shabbat's third meal it can be omitted or not omitted if the third meal is not omitted but even the guest that is a meal on the second evening of the holiday is rejected from the king's table because due to the third meal one does not have an appetite for the second evening's meal if it is neglected and the third meal is not eaten there is something wrong with the king's meal since the king Shabbat misses one meal 120 Rabbi Shimon his father said to him this is like a king a guest came to visit he took his own food and gave to the guest thus though the king does not eat with him the latter eats of the king's victuals and the king gives him food here too Shabbat and also the third meal so the guest who is a meal on the second evening of the holiday would eat heartily so the holiday second evening's meal is the king's Shabbat's food because Shabbat postpones its meal for its sake all that is because it is the king's guest that is because the first day of the holiday occurs on Shabbat and is Therefore the guest of Shabbat but on Shabbat on the holidays eve the third meal is not omitted for the holidays eve's meal we must not raise a difficulty that Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar his son lived in the land of Israel where there are no second days to the holiday because it applies to the second day of Rosh Hashanah that is celebrated in Israel as well where they address those living abroad in the house of Rabbi Hamanasa but they were not concerned about the guest at that time but ate the third meal later on the eve of the second holiday they would prepare a meal for the guest 121 on that day speech is restricted as in nor pursuing your own business nor speaking of vain matters Yeshua 5813 as your speech on Shabbat will not resemble that on weekdays we learn that it is written your own business for you must not speak of your own business since the whole faith is attached to that day 122 Rabbi Lazar said to his father you say that the third meal is not omitted. On the holidays eve yet what do we do so as not to hand the king's meal to the guest not to omit the third meal before the meal of the holidays eve that is on Shabbat eve when the 14th of Nisan occurs on Shabbat we omit and postpone the king's meal the third meal for the guest which is the Pesach's Passover dinner even though the holiday is not the guest of Shabbat but falls on Sunday 123 Rabbi Shimon said to him I say that if the holiday is the guest of Shabbat when it falls on Shabbat one can omit the third meal and postpone it to the holidays eve's meal but otherwise when it does not fall on Shabbat but begins on Sunday one does not omit it and postpone the third meal for the sake of the holidays eve's meal so one would eat heartily you may argue that on the 14th of Nisan that falls on Shabbat the king's meal the third meal is postponed because of the Pesach eve's meal Pesach is different in that the third meal of Shabbat is postponed because of a few Reasons the first is that one should have an appetite to eat matzot and bitter herbs and another is because of shamats on pasach since there must not be leavened bread since the sixth hour on and setting the table without bread is not setting a meal 124 you may say that one may comply with the requirements of the third meal by wine it is so and it may be done with wine because it makes the heart hungry and does not spoil the appetite but all my life I made an effort not to annul the meal. Of Shabbat the third meal even on those Shabbat days that a holiday falls on for on that day the field of holy apple trees Malchut is blessed and the upper and lower beings are blessed this day is the bond of the Torah 125 Rabbi Abba said Rabbi Shimon would act thus when the time came to eat the third meal on Shabbat he would set his table and study the mystic speculations of the divine chariot he used to say this is the meal of the king that will come to eat with me hence Shabbat is. Valuable in all matters more than any other time and holiday it is called holiness rather than summoned from holiness 126 Rabbi Yehuda said we call all the holidays holy gathering summoned from holiness but the exceptions to this rule are Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur where there is no joy since they are of judgments but these three Pesach Passover Shavuot and Sukkot are summoned from holiness to everyone's delight before the Holy One blessed be he this is the meaning of and you shall rejoice before Hashem your Elohim Devarim 1212 and, and rejoice before Hashem your Elohim Devarim 277 on that day of Shabbat every sorrow and vexation and distress are removed from the whole world since it is the day of the king's rejoicing when souls are added in it to Israel in the likeness of the world to come 127 Rabbi Yitzhak said to Rabbi Yehuda it is written remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy Shema 208 we learned one should remember it through one he asks why through Wine he said to him because wine is the joy of the Torah being the mokin of the illumination of Chakma that is called wine that shines upon Zeir and that is called Torah the wine of the Torah which is the mokin of Zeir and is everyone's joy this wine gladdens the king Zeir and with his crowns the mokin of the first three Sfirot this is the meaning of go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sure Hashirim 311 we learned that in all things one should demonstrate a deed below to arouse its corresponding root above for holiness abounds only in wine is written for your love is better than wine Sure Hashirim 12 which means it is good because it is wine also we will praise lit remind your love more than through wine of it for hence Kiddush on Shabbat is performed over wine as we already explained and taught section 24 the two bloods of Pesach and of circumcision Rabbi Shia examines. The verse from Shir Hashirim that begins I sleep but my heart wakes and talks about the exile of Israel and about the opening one must find to come into God that opening is the gates of righteousness Rabbi Shia talks about the blood marked on the doorposts that was Israel's display of faith at the time that God killed all the firstborn in Egypt we read about the time of the full moon when the clipot are hidden away and the holy union is present Rabbi Abba explains about the four cups that correspond to the four redemptions and about the four grades or Sfirot that bond together he tells Rabbi Yehuda why the Hillel is not recited during the seven days of Passover 128 on the 14th day of the first month Vayikra 235 Rabbi Shia opened with I sleep but my heart wakes heart my beloved is knocking Shir Hashirim 52 the congregation of Israel said I sleep in exile in Egypt since exile comes from the power the left exercises over the right and with the judgments of the left it Mokin of Malchut are gone which is considered sleep my children were there under harsh enslavement but my heart wakes to keep them so they will not be destroyed in exile heart my beloved is knocking refers to the Holy One blessed be he who said and I have remembered my covenant Shemot 65 129 open to me sure Hashirim 52 means open to me and opening as thin as a needle and I shall open to you the celestial gates open to me my sister since the opening to come into me is within you. So my children shall enter only through you unless you open your opening I am closed off and cannot be found hence open to me open to me assuredly therefore when David wished to come into the king he would say open to me the gates of righteousness I will go into them and I will praise Yah this is the gate of Hashem Tehillim 11819 to 20 this the gates
Join the leavened bread in the holy bond after they are circumcised, they come into it by means of the matzah until after the giving of the Torah when they uncovered the corona and their imprint was revealed, and he gave them the bond in a high place in the bond of faith, the place where it is written, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Shema 164 exactly from heaven, namely from Zeir and been called heaven. This has already been explained 132. Come and see on the fourteenth day at night. When the union of the moon Malchut is in perfection with the sun's Eir and the Lord's Firat of the Klippot do not endure so much in the world for at the time of the renewal of the moon evil species abound and are roused to expand in the world but when the union of the moon is holy in the light of the sun all the Klippot are gathered into one place and hide while the holy things of the king are roused then it is a night of watchfulness to Hashem Shema 1242 since the holy union is present which is watchful in every respect 133 Rabbi Acha said for that reason the bride Malchut is made ready on that day the 14th and on the night of the 15th day the house is settled namely male and female are united woe to those who are not of the household who do not cleave to Malchut when the two Torahs come to unite the written Torah Zeir and the oral Torah Malchut woe to those who are not recognized by them for that reason holy Israel prepare male and female a home that is a union all that fourteenth day and through them those who need to enter that is the mokin necessary for the union of male and female and they male and female are glad and both sing happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come 134 Rabbi Yussi said why should we bother so much there is a whole verse to the effect that that night the supernal holy union is awakened and is present this is the meaning of it is a night of watchfulness to Hashem why is watchfulness with the plural suffix he answers that it alludes to two which are the union of the moon with the sun Malchut and Zeir and for all the children of Israel in their generations if it means that from now on Israel are united and connected with the bond of the holy name and have come out from another dominion for that reason they prepare themselves on the fourteenth and burn all the leaven among them and enter into a holy dominion and the groom and bride Zeir and and Malchut are crowned with the crowns of Supernalaya Mabana and man should show himself free since the Mokin of Supernalaya are called freedom 135 Rabbi Yussi said what is the purpose of the four cups on that night Rabbi Abba said the friends explained they correspond to the four redemptions and I will bring and I will deliver and I will redeem and I will take Shemot 66 to 7 this is well explained in the book of Rabbi Yassi Saba who said that since the holy union abounds that night in all directions both in Chakma and Chesedim the union is formed with four bonds or four grades that are inseparable when this union is present which are Chakma and Bonded Tiferet and Malchut and we are awakened by their joy and drink four corresponding cups because we attain them since whoever is attached to it to the illumination of the union attains all four grades Chakma and Bonded Tiferet and Malchut for that reason this night is different than all other nights and it behooves us to make and unify this name in every way and rejoice. That night since it is joy above and below 136 he further said that these four Chakma and Bonded Tiferet and Malchut are called four redemptions the reason is that the last great Malchut is called Redeemer namely the Redeeming Angel it is only called Redeemer through a higher superior grade Tiferet that is situated over it and shines upon it Tiferet only brings light upon it by means of the two grades above it Chakma and Bonded from which Tiferet receives thus these four Chakma and Bonded Tiferet and Malchut are the four redemptions since they are connected to Malchut called Redeemer 137 Rabbi Yehuda asked Rabbi Abba it says seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses Shemot 1219 and there is joy although seven why is no complete hallow prayer of thanksgiving recited throughout the seven days of Pesach as in Sukkot where we daily recite hallow with complete joy 138 he said to him well asked but it is known that here on Pesach Israel are not Bonded as holy as they were later because on that first night when the union of male and female is present and overall joy and Israel are bonded with that joy we bring about perfection and the hell is complete but later throughout the days of Pesach even though they are all present all seven grades Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit and Malchut that shine in the seven days of Pesach Israel have not yet connected to them nor uncovered the corona so the holy imprint will be revealed in them nor did they receive the Torah or enter those grades Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit and Malchut as they did later for that reason on Sukkot there is overall perfection and overall joy is in IT to the utmost but here on Pesach they have not yet attained and there was not so much perfection in them even though all seven are present Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit, and Malchut of Zeir and during the seven days of Pesach they are not revealed and Israel were not well connected with them yet until after the giving of the Torah 139 therefore there is overall joy and the hell is recited in full that first night of Pesach because of that portion Israel are attached to the reason is that union is there that night and all the bond of all the grades is present from the side of union from the aspect of awakening above but not from the side of Israel when the union of Zeir and is in her in Malchut the two grades Chakma and Bano were situated over her as well when these are present the whole body the whole stature of Zeir and is with them and everything is perfected and joyous and the hell is recited in full for then the moon Malchut is adorned with everything but this is not so after the first night since every day of the seven days grades Jesus Bure Tiferet Netzach Hadyazit and Malchut is there yet Israel have not yet attained them thus the hell is not complete as in other times section 25 why there are not seven days to Shabbat? We learn why the day of Shabbat is the bond of faith that bonds everything together, and why that day is not extended to seven days. One hundred and forty. Rabbi Yehuda said this as well, and assuredly it is so. I have already heard this another time this way, but I forgot. Now I wish to know something else. We see that on Pesach there are seven days, and on Sukkot there are seven days with the wholeness of joy of Sukkot. On another day, Shmini Atzeret. But why are there not seven days to Shabbat? It is worthy to extend seven days more than all others. One hundred and forty-one. He opened by quoting, and what one nation in the earth is like your people, like Israel. Two Shmuel seven hundred and twenty-three. He asks, what is the difference that here Israel are called one rather than in other places? And he answers, since its purpose here is to specify Israel's praise, it called them one for the place of praise of Israel is one. The reason is that the whole bond of the upper and lower beings is in the place called Israel. Namely Zeir and been called Israel since it is connected with that which is above that is above its chest which is Chesedim and is connected to that which is below that is Netzach and Yezid below his chest whence the plenty of Chakma comes and it is connected with the congregation of Israel Malchut where Chakma is revealed therefore since it connects the three places all is called one faith is known in that place Malchut and the whole bond Netzach and Yezid and the supernal holy union in the first three Sfirah 142 this is why this day of Shavuot the central column that corresponds to Zeir and that is called Israel is the bond of faith that bonds everything also it is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 since the tree of life Zeir and is a tree called one hence since Israel below are attached and hold to this place the tree of life Zeir and they are called one for the tree of life is called one since everything is attached to it and its day Shavuot is assuredly one bonding everything and being the center of everything since it is the central column 143 this is the meaning of the tree of life also in the midst of the garden bear sheet 29 as Zeir and been called the tree of life is actually inside in the center and includes all directions namely the right and left columns and is attached to them hence Pesach and Sukkot and it Shavuot between them since Pesach is the right column Sukkot the left column and Shavuot the central column for it is central to everything which is why that day is to the praise of the Torah because this is the time of the giving of our Torah and no more for Torah is the secret of Zeir and the central column and it is the praise of faith Malchut and the bonding of everything namely the first three Sfirah for all those are connected to the central column Rabbi Yehuda said blessed is the merciful one that I have asked and attained these matters 144 Rabbi Yitzhak. Said Israel will praise the Holy One, blessed be he with joy and song as that praise Israel recite on Pesach's Eve when the congregation of Israel which is the secret of night is sanctified with the sanctification of the king. This is the meaning of you shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept. Yeshayah 3029 The night when a holy solemnity is kept
Torah in this world merits IT in the world to come as we have so learned that causing the sleepers lips to murmur sure hasherim 710 even when they are in that world their lips murmur their Torah from their merit in this world 146 come and see until now that is on Pesach Yisrael sacrifice the corn of the earth namely the Omer the corn of the earth indeed which is the illumination of Malchut called earth they were occupied with it and connected to that bond and even when it is judgment. Judgment is in it in peace and they offered barley since it is the first among all kinds of corn and one should sacrifice the first and not of those that are late since the first attachment of Israel to the Holy One blessed be he lies here the Holy One blessed be he said I give you in the desert out of that place called heaven Zeir and is written behold I will rain bread from heaven for you Shema 164 while you offer barley before me which is the aspect of Malchut 147 the secret of this is this is the Torah of jealousies Bimidbar 529 spelled without Vav it is a warning for women not to go aside to another instead of their husbands otherwise barley meal is ready to be offered from one thing we deduce another happy is the portion of Israel since the congregation of Israel is never false to the Holy King the congregation of Israel wonders and says could it be that a wife goes aside to another instead of her husband to bid and because of that the punishment of that woman who committed adultery against her husband comes from her place her place is that of which it is written who can find a woman of worth for her price is far above rubies Mishlei 3110 and a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband Mishlei 124 148 the barley meal that woman offers is called a meal offering of jealousy spelled without Vav since the congregation of Israel Malchut is so called as the illumination of the barley meal is in her and she therefore punishes her hence it is Written of pinches because he was zealous for his Elohim. Bimidbar 2513 for jealousy. Malchut is attached here for jealousy. Malchut is aroused to punish whoever is false to the covenant. Hence, it was said that jealous people have a right to strike him. Come and see this Omer of barley meal once at the meal and ground. One tenth is taken away, sifted through 13th. Section 27. The festival of Shavuot. We hear about the rejoicing of all the trees when Malchut is perfected. The entire bond of faith comes from the tree Zer and We are told that the congregation of Israel, like a bride, is given portions from each of the grades. Rabbi Shimon tells about the union of Zer and and Malchut. We hear about the tree that is the torso and about all the limbs that are the Sfirot that are attached to it. The feast days of the branches of the tree were throughout the days of Sukkot and after that on Shemini Atzeret is the joy of the tree itself. The tree atones for. The evil inclination in man when the leavened bread is brought the Torah is called the tree of life because its roots are in the deep river of Bina 149 this is the meaning of seven complete Shabbat Ovei 2315 which means that after seven Shabbat have passed the Holy King comes to unite with the congregation of Israel and the Torah is given and the king's Eir and is adorned with the complete union and the time of the Torah has come all the trees that produce the first fruit start singing because they do so by the illumination of the union what do they sing when the fruits are gathered Hashem has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all Tehillim 10319 as the throne Malchut is built and established in the heavens Zeir and then Malchut is perfected in every respect and it is written your steadfast love Hashem is in the heavens Tehillim 366 which means that Chesedim flow from Zeir and to Malchut and it is also written and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Yeshayah 5512, namely the illumination of Malchut called field, will clap hands in relation to this union. Rabbi Shimon opened the article with the verse, Then shall the trees of the wood sing for joy. I and 1633, 150. He continued with the psalm, O sing to Hashem a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Tehillim 981, it is considered a new song, the same one that the trees recite when the fruits are gathered. For that reason, it is written when you bring a new meal offering. Bimidbar 2826, there in relation to the Omer, it is a meal offering of jealousies, that is a barley meal offering. While here it is a new offering, it is considered new because the bride is renewed here, which is the bond of the bride above and below, above and below the chest of Zeir and the bond of faith. Hence Jacob, who is whole Zeir and is adorned with his crowns, and the Torah is given 151 when the first fruits arrived at the priest, it behooved one to say and to. Explain these matters as referring to that tree upon the earth that is perfected in the likeness of above Zeir and in twelve regions and seventy branches when Laban the Aramean wished to destroy it so the world will be blemished because of it the Holy One blessed be he saved the world and was adorned with his children namely the souls of Israel as we explain for the entire bond of faith which is Malchut comes from that tree Zeir and hence Malchut is then called a new meal offering the reason is that the higher and lower beings and the moon Malchut rejoice in it whenever the moon Malchut is new it is the bond of faith with Zeir and its joy 152 this is likened to a king who had sons and one daughter he prepared a meal for all his sons but the daughter did not sit at the table when she came she said to the king sir you have invited all my brothers and have given each one certain portions but you have not given me a portion among them he said to her upon your life Daughter, you shall have a double portion for each will give you of their share. Thus she later had a double portion more than anyone. So the congregation of Israel took portions from each of the grades, both from Shachma and Shesedim. Hence she is called the bride Hevkala, since she includes Hevkala. Everything is a bride to whom everyone gives garments, portions, and jewels. Such is the congregation of Israel. She is renewed in all the grades, and everyone gives her portions and garments, namely Mokin and the garments of Mokin. 153. Come and see when the Holy King Zeir and is adorned with the Mokin of the first three Sfirot. The congregation of Israel rejoices because she too is with those Mokin. When the Torah was given, the congregation of Israel was adorned with celestial crowns. And since the entire bond of faith Malchud was attached to this tree to Zeir and it is considered one day as written, but it shall be one particular day which shall be known as Hashem Sekirya. 147 Assuredly it is one day since the congregation of Israel is one day connected above namely united with Zeir and for Zeir and is considered one only when united with Malchut 154 the connection above in Zeir and is the head which is the skull and the brain the skull is Keter and the parts of the brain's Mokin are Shachmabana and to add another connection is the two arms Chisit and Gura and the torso which is Tiferet Chisit Gura and Tiferet are attached by means of the head. That is they come from Shachmabana and to add in the head Rab Hamana explained it as the three knots of the patriarchs namely Chisit Gura and Tiferet the two pillars Netzach and Hod that flow with the anointing oil in two grades right and left in two rivers the secret of skies to gather the semen in them namely the plenty of Chisit Gura and Tiferet to bring them out in another grade the central column at the mouth of the penis which is Yezid the tree is the torso in the middle namely. Tiferet that is attached to all those Chakmabana and Dach Yisid Bura and Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yisid and they are all attached to it so that everything is one and when the matron Malchut is united with it then it is one completely we already explained these matters 155 come and see it is written on the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly Hebshmini Atzeret Bimidbar 2935 what is the assembly he answers that the place in which everything is connected together is called an assembly which is Malchut that receives from all the Sfirot for what does assembly mean the gathering you may ask for the reason that it is called an assembly here and he answers throughout the days of Sukkot were the feast days of the branches of the tree namely the seventy ministers that come from the outer part of Zeir Anpin hence the seventy bullocks sacrificed on the seven days of Sukkot after that on Shemini Atzeret the day of convocation comes the joy of the tree itself Zeir Anpin Himself, for there it is an assembly for one day which is the joy in the Torah, the joy of the tree which is the body, namely Zeir and 156. Therefore, only the Holy One, blessed be he and the congregation of Israel, take part in the stage Shemini Atzeret. For that reason, you shall have a solemn assembly, you and no other, for when the king is present, everything is there in him. We therefore learned in relation to Shemini Atzeret about the fruit of the tree which alludes to Zeir and that is called tree whose day it is. This was already explained, for that reason, he is called one being united with Malchut. Surely, one, as we said, 157, come and see it is written, you shall bring out of your habitations two wave lobus, they shall be a fine flower, they shall
Yetzirah and Asiyah it has its roots in a deep river that flows which waters never stop flowing namely Bana it is written of it for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters and that spreads out its roots by the river Yermeah 178 the river being Bana hence the Torah Zeir and is called she is a tree of life Mishli 318 since life is drawn from Bana what is meant by and happy are those who hold her fast Ibid we explained it yet happy are those who hold her fast is similar to Happy am I have Oshri for the daughters will call me blessed Beersheet 3013 which alludes to Bana called Asher section 28 the sacrifice of the Omer the section tells us about the commandment to offer the sacrifice of the Omer in order to unite the matron and her children Yisrael the sacrifice is made of barley and offered so as to bring love between a wife and her husband the wife of Harlotri flees the temple so that she will not perish from the test of the waters. Of Soto we are told that the secret here is that there are two sisters the woman of valor and the wife of Harlotri R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 159 and he shall wave the Omer V.I.Pra 2311 we are commanded to offer the sacrifice of the Omer this offering is wholly attached above and below which means that the matron and her children Malchut and Yisrael below go together this means that the purpose of this offering is to establish Malchut above and Yisrael below Yisrael sacrifice. This Omer in their state of purity and the sacrifice is made of barley offered so as to bring love between a wife and her husband 160 the wife of Harlotri distances herself from among them Israel because she cannot remain by the barley offering the woman of valor Malchud who approaches to come near the high priest Zeir and Ben is assuredly pure and of her it says then she shall be free and shall conceive seed Bimidbar 528 and she adds strength and love to her husband Zeir and Ben the wife of Harlotri flees the temple so as not to approach it for if the wife of Harlotri were to approach the woman of valor when the latter is checking herself with the waters of soda a wife suspected of adultery she would perish the curse would fall upon her and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall fall away Bimidbar 527 she therefore refuses to come near the temple but runs away and Israel remain worthy with the secret of faith Malchud unmixed since the foreign mixture the wife of Harlotry has already fled 161 the secret behind this mystery is that there are two sisters the woman of valor and wife of harlotry when the one smells the mouth of the other the water of soda of her examination that is in her womb her belly of the wife of harlotry swells and her thigh falls away even though the wife of harlotry did not undergo the test but only came near the woman of valor who checked herself which is the secret of the barley offering all the curses fell upon her as if she drank it herself for the checking of the woman of valor is a poison of death to the wife of harlotry this is a counsel the holy one blessed be he gave to his children to offer the sacrifice of the barley offering to the woman of valor namely the test such as the water of soda so that the wife of harlotry will flee her and Israel will remain unmixed happy are they in this world and in the world to come and of rai may in the section 29 the counting of the omer rabbi Abba. Says that when Israel were in Egypt, they were attached to impurity until they were circumcised and attained the covenant. He says that seven Shabbat need to be counted in order to merit Zir and Ben on the holiday of Shabbat 162. Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Shia were walking along the way. Rabbi Shia said, It is written, and you shall count for yourselves from the morrow after the Shabbat from the day that you brought the Omer of the wave offering. Vayikra 2315. What does this mean? He said to him, Come. And see, when Israel were in Egypt, they were under another power and were attached to impurity as a woman sitting in her days of uncleanness after they were circumcised. They entered the holy portion called covenant, which is the secret of Malchud. Once they were attached to her, impurity stopped from among them as a woman whose blood of uncleanness stopped from her after the blood of Uncle Anna stopped in her. It is written, and she shall number to herself seven days. Vayikra 1528 here two once. They came in the holy portion the covenant their impurity stopped and the holy one blessed be he said from now on it is a reckoning for purity 163 and, and you shall count for yourselves yourselves is specific as written then she shall number to herself seven days in which to herself means for her sake here too for yourselves means for your own sake why is that in order to be purified in supernal holy waters namely the illumination of Bana by means of the counting of the Omer. After that in Shavuot they shall come and join the king's Eir and, and receive his Torah 164 he asks there in relation to the menstruating woman it is written then she shall number to herself seven days while here it says seven complete Shabbat Ovei 2315 why are seven Shabbat needed here he answers this is in order to be worthy of being purified by the water from the flowing and emerging river which is by the lights of which are called living waters from that river seven. Shabbat come out which are the seven Svarat Shisit Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazit and Malchut in Egypt which are seven Svarat Shisit Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazit and Malchut there are the forty nine Svarat after the secret of the forty nine gates of Bana for that reason seven Shabbat need to be counted in order to merit Zeir and Ben on the holiday of Shabbat and receive the Torah like a wife on her night of cleanness mates with her husband one hundred and sixty five it is written this way and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night Bimit bar one hundred and nineteen it is written upon the camp not the dew fell in the night but upon the camp the reason is that dew namely plenty falls down from that point Chakma upon these forty nine days in Bina called camp and Bina joined them through the holy king Zeir and Ben when did the dew fall when Yisrael approached Mount Sinai on Shabbat the dew then fell completely and purified Yisrael as the filth was stopped from them namely the filth of the serpent that he injected into Eve. By the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they joined the king and the congregation of Israel and received the Torah. We already explained that at that time, surely all the rivers run into the sea. Kahilat 17 to be purified and to wash, and everything is attached and joined with the holy king's Eir and the central column is the holiday of Shavuot is an aspect of him. 166. Come and see whoever did not number this reckoning. These seven complete Shabbat to earn this purity is not considered pure and is not among the pure, nor is he worthy of having a portion in the Torah. And whoever arrives pure on that day Shavuot and did not lose the count upon reaching that night of Shavuot, he needs to be occupied in the Torah and unite with it and keep supernal purity that comes to him on that night. So he is purified. Section 30 Shavuot night. We learned that one should study the oral Torah on the night of Shavuot so that everything will be purified in one. Should study the written Torah on the day of Shavuot so that everything will be united. We read of the preparations for that joining 167. We learned that one should study this night of Shavuot, the oral Torah, which is Malchut, so that Malchut and Yisrael, her children, will be purified together by the flowing of the deep river, namely from Bana. After that, during the day on Shavuot, the written Torah, which is Zeir and Ben, will come and join at Malchut, so they will be together united as one above a proclamation then resounds concerning him, saying, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Hashem, my spirit that is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth. Yeshayah 5921 168. Therefore, the pious in ancient times did not sleep that night, but were studying the Torah, saying, Let us come and receive this holy inheritance for us and our children in both worlds. That night, the congregation of Israel is an adornment over them, and she comes to unite with the king, both decorated. Heads of those who merit this 169 Rabbi Shimon said the following when the friends gathered with him that night let us come and prepare the jewels of the bride namely draw Mokin upon Malchut so that tomorrow she will be bejeweled that is with Mokin and properly ready for the king happy is the portion of the friends when the king will ask the queen who prepared her jewels illuminated her crowns and put on her adornments no one in the world knows how to fix the adornments of the bride save the friends happy is their portion in this world and in the world to come 170 come and see the friends prepare that night jewels for the bride who is Malchut and decorate her with crowns to the king and who attends the king's Zeir and that night so that he will be with the bride and unite with the matron Malchut that is the deep stream the deepest among the rivers which is super I am that ready Zeir and this is the secret of go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him, Shirhashirim 311 after Bana ready the king and crowned him, she comes to purify the matron and those who stand by her, namely the friends that busy themselves with preparing her 171. This is likened to a king who had
151 to 2 who acts justly those who prepare the matron with her jewels dress and crowns each one is considered one who acts righteously since Malchut is called righteousness Rabbi Shia said had I had merit in the world only to hear these words it would suffice me happy is the portion of those who study the Torah and know the ways of the holy king whose desire is for the Torah of them it is written because he has set his delight upon me therefore I will set him on high I will deliver him in honor. Im Tehillim 9114 to 15 section 31 the counting of the Omer and the holiday of Shavuot we are told that Israel do not recite the Hillel in full as in the days of Pesach since they are not yet properly whole and pure we are told about the 50 days of purification the purpose of which is to enter the secret of the world to come to receive the Torah and to draw Malchut near and 49 of those days are all the aspects of the Torah while the 50th day is a secret. Of the Torah itself on the fiftieth day Shabbat the hidden is revealed the two lobes of the offering are the secret of the two Sheshen as the upper and the lower that join together Zir and receives from above and from below from Bina and Malchut because Shabbat is a secret above and below are Ai Mahim the faithful shepherd one hundred and seventy four and you shall count for yourselves from the morrow after the Shabbat Vayikra two thousand three hundred and fifteen we are commanded to perform the counting of the Omer which we already explain this is a secret for Israel even though they were purified so as to perform the Paschal sacrifice and came out of their defilement were not yet properly whole and pure hence the hell is not recited in full as in the days of Pesach since they are not yet properly complete one hundred and seventy five this is like a woman who comes out of her uncleanness from the time she comes out then she shall number to herself seven days Vayikra one thousand five hundred and twenty eight year two when Israel came out of Egypt they came out of impurity. And performed the Pesach eating at their father's table, namely Malchut called table from that time on. Let them do the reckoning to draw a wife near her husband, so she would join him. These are the fifty days of purification, the purpose of which is to enter the secret of the world to come, which is Bina that has fifty gates to receive the Torah and to draw a wife near her husband, namely to unite Malchut with Zeir and Ben one hundred and seventy six. Since these days are the days of the male world of Zeir and Ben only, men are commanded to count. Hence the counting is done standing up, but that which pertains to the lower world, which is Malchut, is done sitting not standing. This is the secret of the prayer recited standing up, the Amid of prayer and the prayer recited sitting down. From who forms the light to the Amid of prayer one hundred and seventy seven. As for those fifty days, forty nine days are all the aspects of the Torah, since there are forty nine pure aspects in the Torah, while the fiftieth day is the secret of the Torah itself. There are a sabbatical year and a jubilee during those fifty days seven sabbatical years and one jubilee you may ask how there are fifty if there are only forty nine as we do not count the fiftieth the answers one is hidden and the world is supported by it on the fiftieth day Shabbat the hidden is revealed and concealed in it as a king coming to his friend's house to stay there year two such as the fiftieth day which secret we already explained one hundred and seventy eight the following precept is to celebrate the holiday of Shabbat as written and you shall keep the feast of weeks to Hashem your Elohim Devarim one thousand six hundred and ten it is called Shabbat lit weeks since Israel have entered the secret of the fiftieth day which is seven weeks that means the fiftieth day alone includes seven weeks being the fiftieth day through the offering of the Omer the barley offering the evil inclination which is the wife of harlotry is voided fleeing the woman of valor and when the wife of harlotry does not approach the woman of valor Israel cleave. To the Holy One, blessed be He in the secret of the seven weeks, and the evil inclination is voided from above and from below, not having a grasp on Zeir and Ben and Malchut 179. This is why it is named Atzeret and Assembly for voiding the evil inclination. For that reason, no sin offering is mentioned in relation to it, as during other festivals where sin offering is mentioned, all the lights then gather to the woman of valor. The lights of the seven weeks gather to Malchut, for that reason it is called an Assembly 180. It is written Shabbat and weeks, but not how many weeks there are, and He answers wherever it plainly says weeks. The name implies there are seven weeks, as written seven weeks shall you number to you, Devarim 169. Why does it say only weeks when there are seven? So it should be written plainly weeks for the purpose of including the seven weeks above and the seven weeks below, which are all included in the fiftieth day, for whenever these the seven weeks above stir. These the seven weeks below stir as well until Solomon came and attained the fiftieth gate and the moon was full they were not revealed once Solomon came he individualized them as written seven days and seven days I may lash him eight hundred and sixty five this is individualization that is the fourteen days revealed by the fiftieth gate were detailed one hundred and eighty one during other times besides the days of Solomon there are no individual fourteen days but only included in weeks in general for no one else may individualize them. Except Solomon for the seven days below did not shine holy from the seven days above until Solomon arrived and the moon remained full during these seven days but here it is plainly feast of weeks not mentioned in detail because the lower seven days were included in the upper seven days and do not shine there as during the days of Solomon one hundred and eighty two the following commandment is to offer the two loaves as we explained that the two loaves are the secret of the two session as the upper bina and the lower Malchut that join together and the lower beings receive from Malchut just as they receive from Bina since they are joined there are two corresponding loaves of bread on Shabbat the double bread which is double provision from above and from below from Bina and from Malchut therefore it is written two omers for one man Shemot 1622 which also alludes to Bina and Malchut surely they are for one because they come together in one place namely in that which is called one what is it? it is the voices Jacob's voice Bershi 2722 namely Zeir and Ben that receives from above and from below from Bina and Malchut that is two loaves together this is because Shabbat is a secret above and below together and everything together is called Shabbat namely the two loaves and of Rai Mahim the 183 the following precept is to arrange the bread and the frankincense and to offer the omer as written and you shall offer that day when you wave the omer he lamb without blemish of it. First year for a burnt offering to Hashem and the meal offering thereof shall be two tenth measures of fine flour mingled Bayikra 2312 to 13 also to sacrifice on Shavuot the two loaves and on all holidays to sacrifice an additional sacrifice for surely on every day during the festivals its sacrifice should be offered namely the daily sacrifice just like during weekdays and also sacrifice the addition namely the secret of the additional light on that holiday this is like an addition on the Kitabah. And gifts the groom gifts the bride also Queen Shabbat Malchut is a bride during Shabbat and all holidays and is in need of an addition which are the additional sacrifices and the offerings which are the offering from the priesthood 184 on Shabbat the giving of the Torah the two tablets of the Torah were given by and Malchut from the aspect of the tree of life which is Zeir and it behooves us to sacrifice to them the two loaves of bread the secret of Hey, hey namely Bina and Malchut. The two HEIS of the Yud Hey Bob Hey for they are the bread of the Torah Zeir and Ben of which it says come eat of my bread Mishlei 95 there Hey Hey of Hey Matzi Hayaretz and who brings forth bread from the earth the earth is the lower Hey Malchut the Hey of Hey Matzi is the first Hey Bina 185 this the two loaves is food for man who is Yad Bob Dalat Hey Alat Bob Alat Bob Hey Alat which has the same numerical value as Adam and man namely Zeir and Ben that includes the two HEIS this is the meaning of this is the Torah when a man Bimidbar 1914 IT indicates that the Torah which is the secret of Zeir and Ben is the secret of Yud Hey Bob Hey of the numerical value of 45 the numerical value of which is that of man if any man of you bring an offering to Hashem Vayikra 12 IS the secret of food for man but the Omer of barley is food for animals which are the holy living creatures of which one should offer this is the secret of the cattle the secret of the rams that lock. Horns against each other in the Mishnah and the literal explanation of the Torah. These are the sages that fight each other when explaining the Mishnah of the herd. Ibid refers to bullocks that gore each other more forcefully in the Mishnah and of the flock. Ibid refers to the rest of the people who sacrifice Israel, whom it says, But you, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. Yashiskel 3431. The flock of my pasture are those who study the literal meaning of the Torah. Only men are the sages who study Kab
Measures of barley and laid it under a rug 315 This is the secret of the oral Torah of the six orders of the mission but those from the tree of life the Kabbalah masters are men whose Torah is the bread of the Holy One blessed be he namely the food of Zeir and that is called man this is the meaning of come eat of my bread namely the two loaves of bread all the Tanaim and Amram rejoiced and said who can stand before Sinai namely before Rai Mahim who is called Sinai. Section 32 Blowing the Shofar Rabbi Itzhak tells us that God did Israel a great kindness by drawing them to himself from afar when the higher and lower beings are gathered for judgment. The blowing of the Shofar causes the attribute of judgment to turn to mercy. The sound of the Shofar below causes the supernal Shofar to resound to awaken mercy by the sounds below. Israel gives strength above. We hear about what happens to the holy wicked, to the holy righteous, and to the mediocre. 187 In the seventh month on the first day of the month, Vayikra 2324, Rabbi Itzhak opened with blow a Shofar at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day. Tehillah 814 Happy are Israel, whom the Holy One blessed be. He drawn near rather than all the nations in the world and shows them from afar. He drew them near. This is the meaning of. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says Hashem Elohim of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the river in old time. Yahashua 242 to indicate. That he desired them from a distant place and drew them near him. It is also written, and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river. But three, we have to examine these verses. Did not the whole of Israel know this? And Joshua, all the more why the need to say, thus says Hashem 188, the whole Torah is both hidden and revealed, just like the holy name which is hidden and revealed, spelled as Yudhe Bavhe, but pronounced Adonai. This is because the whole Torah is the holy name, which is why it is hidden and revealed. We ask if Israel and Joshua knew this. Why is it written? Thus says Hashem. He answers, surely the secret meaning is that the Holy One, blessed be He, did great kindness with Israel in choosing the patriarchs, making them into a lofty holy chariot for His glory. He brought them from the supernal, precious, and holy river, the luminary of all luminaries, namely Bani, in order to be adorned by them. This is the meaning of your fathers dwelt on the other side of. The river in old time, the river is that one specific river, namely Bina 189. The verse says in old time also from the world. He asks what does this convey and answers this indicates Chakma on the other side of the river, namely from the world, since that river is called world. Bina is also called world and hence from the world has the same meaning as across the river. Hence it says your fathers dwelt on the other side of the river from the world to show the kindness and truth it. Holy one blessed be he did for Israel in this sense. I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river. He asks what does the verse teach us in saying and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river and not saying and I took Isaac. He answers Abraham did not cleave to that river like Isaac did who was attached to his own aspect to draw strength 190. Come and see even though this river Bina is not in judgment since Bina is an attribute of mercy nevertheless. Judgments come out from its side and judgments are strengthened in it when Isaac grows strong in his judgments from there the higher and lower beings are gathered for judgment the throne of judgment which is the attribute of judgment in Malchut is prepared and the holy king Zeir and sits on the throne of judgment and sentences the world and blow a shofar at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day by the shofar the attribute of judgment turns into the attribute of mercy happy are Israel who know how to remove the throne of judgment and prepare the throne of mercy how do they do it by the shofar 191 Rabbi Abba was sitting before Rabbi Shimon he said to him I have asked many times about the purpose of the shofar but never felt settled about it he said to him surely this is its clear meaning Israel need a shofar rather than a horn on the day of judgment for the place of origin of the horn is known to indicate Malchut the attribute of judgment and we should not arouse Judgment IT is not so with the shofar that alludes to Bina which is mercy indeed we learn that we need to indicate and rouse hidden things by deed namely by the blowing of the shofar and its blessing 192 come and see if the supernal shofar which includes all lights is gone and does not shine upon the children's eir and, and malchut judgment is roused and thrones are prepared for the courthouse the shofar Bina is called Isaac's ram namely Isaac's strength since ram is derived from strength that gives importance to the patriarchs Jesus Bura and Tiferet that receive all their importance from that shofar Bina when the great shofar is gone and does not shine on the children's eir and, and malchut Isaac grows strong and prepares himself to judge the world 193 when that shofar is roused and people repent of their sins the sound of the shofar should resound from below the sound arises up and then another supernal shofar is roused which is by the mercy is awakened and Judgment is gone. A deed must be displayed by the blowing of the shofar in order to awaken another shofar and to draw from the lower shofar all those sounds tiki ashvarim tiruh tiki etc. to show that all the celestial sounds included in the higher shofar the three detailed columns included in bina will be roused to emerge from bina to zeir and and malchut 194 by the sounds below Israel gives strength above hence a shofar needs to be summoned on that day to arrange the sounds namely the patterns of tiki ashvarim tiruh tiki etc. to meditate on it so as to rouse another shofar bina in which all the upper sounds chesed vira and tiferet of zeir and are included 195 in the first sequence of the three sequences tiki ashvarim tiruh tiki etc. a sound reverberates adorned above in bina it rises through firmaments to be cleft between the high mountains from there comes Abraham chesed of zeir and to dwell at its top he is adorned is roused and prepares it. Throne to be a throne of mercy in the book of Gita. We learned that when the first sound rises, Abraham awakens, he is adorned and prepares the throne. Abba is summoned upon him. 196. In the meantime, the second sound resonates. It is strong to break harsh judgments. This is the second sequence of Tiki Ishvarim Tiruh Tikiyah. The sound breaks with its strength. It rises to Bina, and all judgments that meet there are broken before it until they rise to where Isaac is when Isaac is roused and sees. Abraham preparing the throne of mercy to stand before it. He is subdued and breaks the harsh judgment. Whoever blows should meditate in heart and desire upon this in order to break that power and the strength of the harsh judgment. This is the meaning of happy is the people that know the joyful note of Tiruah. Tehillim 8916 Tiruah is derived from breaking assuredly. They know Tiruah. 197. In the third sequence of Tiki Ishvarim Tiruh Tikiyah, sound emerges and rises. It cleaves all firmaments. And mercy is aroused, all this occurs in Bina, and from there that sound reaches Jacob's head. Jacob wakes up and sees Abraham preparing on the other side, and both hold Isaac from one side, the right and the other, the center, and the power of the judgment of the left cannot come out. All these three sequences are all one sequence 198. As for the other sequence of the three times, Tiki Ishvarim Tiki, a sound reverberates, rises, takes Abraham from his place, and draws him down to where the powers of Isaac dwell. They maintain Abraham among them. 199. In the second sequence of Tiki Ishvarim Tiki, a broken sound reverberates, not as strong as the first. It is not because the sound he blew is weak, but it is not directed at Isaac as before, where there is great strength, but the sound is meant for the lower courthouse, where judgments are more lax. They all see Abraham by the men are subdued before him. 200. Then comes the third sequence of Tiki Ishvarim Tiki, a sound emerges and rises. It is crowned on the head of Jacob and draws him down to where the judgments of the left dwell before it stand Abraham on the one side and Jacob on the other there are brought inside the two of them which are then subdued and shine where they are all three sequences are another inclusive sequence 201 the last inclusive sequence is three times tiki tiruh tiki these need to raise them to their places and settle Isaac among them as before for that reason they need to place him in his place in such a way that he will not come out through the power of his brought all judgments are subdued then and mercy awakens 202 for that reason it behooves us to meditate and concentrate on these sounds of three times tiki ishvarim tiruh tiki three times tiki ishvarim tiki and three times tiki tiruh tiki and they need to repent before their master then when Israel ready themselves and arrange these sounds willingly and properly with this lower shofar by the upper shofar. Shines again when it shines again it adorns Jacob's Zeir and, and everything is established a different throne the throne of
Bayai 2324 which means we are reminded to direct the heart and wish in the manner mentioned above Yisrael perform a memorial below by the deed of blowing the shofar so that a similar thing will be roused above 205 Rabbi Lazar said it is written at the full moon also the covering on our feast day this is because the moon Malchud was covered on it for on Rosh Hashanah the moon is hidden he asks how is it covered and answers when there is a cloud underneath the sun and the sun which is Zeir Anpin does not shine the moon is covered which means it does not shine since there is no one from which to receive life or whatever Malchud has she receives from Zeir Anpin therefore if because of the clouds which indicate judgments the sun Zeir Anpin cannot shine the moon all the more is hidden and cannot illuminate hence in at the covering of Keze on our feast day Keze is spelled with A in final position to indicate that the moon is covered because of judgments how can Everything both Zeir Anpin and Malchut shine through repentance and the sound of the shofar as written happy is the people that know the joyful note then they shall walk Hashem in the light of your countenance Tehillim 8916 section 33 Rosh Hashanah we learn that the day of Rosh Hashanah is a day when the moon is hidden and the world is under judgment God allotted the prosecutor a specific day in which to demand all the punishments in the world so that the fear of God would increase he wants the world to know that there is judgment and there is a judge witnesses come on the day of judgment and testify about all the deeds of everyone in the world these witnesses are called the eyes of Hashem that see everything we are told how everything is put down in writing and how someone's verdict can be torn up if he repents God prefers people to be saved from punishment his love for his children overcomes his love of judgment we hear the explanation of Isaacs Blessing of Jacob instead of Esau and of how this relates to the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 206 in the seventh month on the first day of the month Vayikra 2324 this commandment is to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah which is judgment day to the world as we explained we explain the words blow a shofar at the new moon at the full moon or covering on our feast day Tehillim 814 we learned that this day is a day when the moon Malchud is covered and the world is under judgment for the prosecutor covers and hides and locks the entrance to the king who is Zeir Anpin and the moon is a place where judgment abides to demand justice from the world 207 you may wonder how the prosecutor was given permission to cover the light of Malchud and demand punishment and he answers surely the holy one blessed be he allowed the prosecutor to demand justice from the whole world he allotted him a specific day in which to demand all the Punishments in the world for the Holy One blessed be he made him and placed him before himself so the fear of the Holy One blessed be he will increase and rest on everyone this is the secret of an Elohim does it so that men should fear before him Kahila 314 what is does he did this prosecutor and made him before himself to be a sharp sword over the whole world all for the reason that all will fear the Holy One blessed be he oversees and prosecutes the sins of people demands punishment and seizes people kills them and strikes them all just as it was decided in court 208 it is like the minister appointed over the terrestrial court who was given permission to mention before the court that so and so did this and so and so transgressed that and to demand punishment we learned that the minister appointed over the court was given permission to lock the entrance to the court until verdicts will be meted out to all his persecution the court is not allowed to decline him because for I Hashem love justice Yeshaya 618 and he wants the world to be maintained by judgment so as to make known that there is judgment and there is a judge all this applies to the terrestrial court 209 the holy one blessed be he did the same he placed before him that prosecutor who demands punishment before the king for all the people in the world on that day he is given permission to cover the entrance of the king's eir and the moon malchut is hidden inside until punishment is meted out to all the people in the world though everything is revealed before the holy one blessed be he, he nevertheless desires nothing but according to judgment 210 everything operates in the same way above and below on that day the holy one blessed be he fixes the throne of judgment and the administrator comes and demands justice for all the deeds of the people in the world each according to his ways and deeds witnesses come and testify to all the deeds of the people in the world and these Witnesses are called the eyes of Hashem that roam throughout the whole world and see the deeds of the people in the world. 211 Woe to those who do not care and do not observe their doings for the witnesses of the king stand by them observe and see whatever they do or say they ascend and testify before the king. The administrator stands before the king and demands punishment so and so transgressed the law and so and so did that here are the witnesses as long as the holy one blessed be he does. Not ask them they have no permission to testify when he asks them they deliver their testimony. 212 Everything is put in writing before the king in the king's house there is a certain chamber full of white fire this fire rolls in a circle with burning sparks and never ceases inside this chamber there is another chamber full of black fire which never ceases. Two scribes stand before the king at all times during trials all witnesses testify before the king the scribes take from the circle of White fire and write the verdict on it with the black circle 213 the king then holds the verdict for some time in case they will repent in the meantime if they return in repentance the writings are torn up if not the king sits and all the defenders stand before him the crier stands and announces so and so did this who shall defend him if there is someone to defend him it is well otherwise he is given to the administrator for punishment 214 he asks yet the holy one blessed be he knows everything why does he need all this and he answers this is so that people will have no excuse but rather to show that he does everything truthfully he prefers it when one is saved from his punishment you may ask once we know that this was given to the sages and even those who do not know whoever may wish to see may see what is divulged below in this world and thus know what is a mystery above since everything follows the same pattern for whatever the holy one blessed be he does in it Ways of the world is in the likeness of above 215 the day of Rosh Hashanah is judgment day and the king sits on the throne of judgment the administrator comes and covers the entrance to the king and demands punishment even though the holy one blessed be he loves judgment as written for I Hashem love justice the love of his children overcame the love of judgment when the administrator rises to speak about them the holy one blessed be he commanded to blow the shofar in order to rouse love from below upward by that shofar 216 the sound rises included of fire wind and water which correspond to chesed bura and typhorat that merge into one sound another sound from above is roused before it which is the central column that joins left and right when that sound is roused from above and from below all the charges the prosecutors raise are confused 217 on the day of Rosh Hashanah Isaac comes out alone that is the left column reigns without the right without the joining of it. Central column which are Abraham and Jacob he calls he saw the other side to give him dishes to eat of the whole world according to their deeds namely to demand punishment for the actions of all the people in the world for at that time his eyes were dim so that he could not see Bereshit 271 because he that darkens people's faces comes out from him that is the prosecutor is drawn from the left when it is without the right he is separated from the right and central column lies on the couch of judgment and calls he saw who is the other side and the prosecutor and he said catch me some venison and make me savory food of it three to four from the evil deeds of people and bring it to me of it 218 and Rivka spoke to Jacob her son of it six her heart's beloved her beloved son given to her since the world was created she orders him to rouse himself with his own dishes Jacob awakens below Don's prayers and petitions and the voices Jacob's voice of it 22 with the celestial chauffeur supernal Jacob. Awakens who is the central column towards him Isaac and approaches him by joining him with Abraham who is the right and he brought it near to him and he did eat of it 25 which means they were incorporated within each other and the Mokin shown the secret of eating once the central column was included in him he brought him wine of it the preserved wine namely the illumination of Chakma that shines from below upwards fixed by the central column the wine rejoices the heart the secret of it. World to come namely the illumination of Chakma that is drawn from by called the world to come then he smelled the smell of his garments of it 27 that is the ascending prayers and petitions and blessed him of it that means anger abetted the heart rejoiced and everything is full of mercy 219 once he is incorporated in Jacob all the awaiting powers harsh judgments and anger dispersed and were no longer present there Israel emerged from judgment with happiness and blessings and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father on that day with joy and celestial blessings that he saw his brother came in from his hunting of it thirty loaded with burdens of the deeds of the world to denounce
Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth. Ibid 39 The mighty men and the multitudes of the other people, this was hardest for him, and he saw hated Jacob, Ibid 41 following him and constantly denouncing him. 221 Jacob goes the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and flees so as to be saved from him. He repents and fasts until Yom Kippur, and Yisrael know that Esau comes with 400 people, all prosecutors ready to denounce them. Forthwith Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Bear she 328 and raised many prayers and petitions, and Jacob said, O Elohim of my father Abraham and Elohim of my father Ibid 10 until he reached a decision, saying, For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me. Ibid 21 and took of that which came to his hand a present. 400 she goats and 20 he goats 200 ewes. Ibid 14 to 15 222 camels. Ibid 16 such is his side like camels. Camels are the primordial serpent that was like a camel when it. Angel Samael tempted Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He was riding on a camel like serpent. We learned that whoever sees a camel in his dream was punished by death from above but was saved from it. It is all the same, which means that the camel and the serpent that delivered death to the world are the same thing. 223 Esau then reverted to be Jacob's defender, yet Jacob wanted neither his honey nor his sting, but said, Let my master, I pray you, pass over before his servant. Bear she 3314. Then Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. Bit 16 when was that during the kneel of prayer since then he parted from the holy nation and the holy one blessed be he forgives their iniquities and atones for them. Once the prosecutor left with the gift and separated from them, the holy one blessed be he wishes to rejoice with his children. It is then written, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built him a house. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkot. Bit 17 since Israel. Well, in Sukkot they were saved from the prosecutor and the Holy One blessed be he rejoiced in his children happy is their lot in this world and in the world to come and of R.A.I. Mahim the section 34 Yom Kippur we are told that on Yom Kippur Malchut is illuminated not from the light of the sun but from supernal light instead Rabbi Abba learns from Rabbi Shimon that Zir does not unite with Malchut except when she shines from supernal Abba at which time Malchut is called holiness Rabbi Abba says that Adam stands as an example to all men and that he repented after his sin and God accepted him and had pity on him 224 come and see on that day of Rosh Hashanah the moon is gathered which is Malchut and does not shine until the tenth day of the month when all of Israel return in complete repentance and supernal Ayamibana again shines upon it on that day Yom Kippur Malchut receives the illuminations of Ayamibana and joy abounds everywhere hence it is Written for it is a day of atonement at Yom Kippur Vayikra 2328 it should have said Yom Kippur in the singular what is the meaning of Yom Kippurim in the plural this is because at that time two lights shine together the supernal luminary bina shines upon the lower luminary Malchut on that day Malchut shines with supernal light which is bina instead of from the light of the sun Zeir and hence it is written at the full moon also the covering on our feast day Tehillim 814 because Malchut does not shine until Yom Kippur 225 Rabbi Abba sent a question to Rabbi Shimon saying when does the union of the congregation of Israel Malchut with the holy king Zeir and occur he sent to him and yet indeed she is my sister she is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother and she became my wife Bereshit 2012 Rabbi Abba trembled and raised his voice in crying he said Rabbi Rabbi holy luminary woe woe to the world when you shall depart from it woe to that Generation which will be in the world when you shall leave them and they shall be orphaned from you. Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Abba, What does this verse he sent you mean? 226 Rabbi Abba said to him, Surely the king does not unite with the matron, namely Zeir and with Malchut, save when she shines from supernal Abba. When Chakma of Ima is clothed in Chesedim of Abba, when she shines from him, she is called holiness, since she receives it from the abode of supernal Abba, as Abba is the secret of holiness. Then male and female made together for the king is called holiness, as written Israel is holiness to Hashem. Yermea 23, receiving from the place called holiness, then Zeir and says, My sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, because that name holiness is from Abba's house and not from my mother's house, not from Bina, therefore, and she became my wife to unite as one during that time, but on no other time that I as when she receives from the house of Abba but not when she receives from the house of Ima Yom Kippur proves that as intercourse is forbidden on it since then there is no mating of Zeir Enfin and Malchut as on Yom Kippur she receives from the house of Ima and not from the house of Abba Rabbi Shia said indeed happy is the generation amongst whom dwells Rabbi Shimon happy are those who daily stand before him 227 Rabbi Abba said Adam was created on Rosh Hashanah and stood on trial before his master for eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil he repented and the Holy One blessed be he accepted him he said to him Adam you shall serve as a symbol for your descendants for generations who are sentenced on that day if they shall repent I shall accept them rise from the throne of judgment and sit on the throne of mercy and have pity on them David used to say I love Hashem who hears my voice and my supplications Tehillim 1161 hence it is written but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared Tehillim 1304 and 4 with you is the fountain of life in your light we see light. Tehillim 3610 we learn that it is a commandment to be afflicted on Yom Kippur to subjugate body and soul. Rai Mahim the faithful shepherd 227b it is a commandment to be afflicted on Yom Kippur to subjugate body and soul by means of the five afflictions of five grades of Yom Kippur which are Chesed, Bura, Typhra, Netzach and Hot for the prosecutor comes to impart their sins as we learned and they are all, all of Israel repenting holy before their father as we learned in different places and of Rai Mahim Rabbi Shia tells us about the ten kinds of songs in the book of Tehillim he speaks about a masculine or understanding that bestows wisdom from it comes forgiveness and freedom he says that a man who repents before God has his sins hidden but if he will not repent and his sins shall be made known before everyone Rabbi Abba explains what happens to the good deeds that were done by a man who is unbalanced judged to be evil and what happens to the sins that were done by a man who is unbalanced judged to be worthy he talks about the depths of the sea where all the sins are found and about the lot that chooses the goat for Azazel we are told how God distracted the prosecutor from accusing Israel by giving him job to occupy himself with this left Israel free to cross the sea and escape from the Egyptians the offering on Yom Kippur is for the same purpose allowing God to forgive Israel without interference from the prosecutor Rabbi Abba talks about the ritual counting of the priest as he sprinkles the blood of the offering the purpose of which is to draw and guide the one that is supernal Ima through specific grades and to draw the deep rivers upon the congregation of Israel Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Abba tell us about the high priest as he enters the holy of holies and hears the wings of the cherub singing Rabbi Shimon says that Malchut is only able to join with Zir. And when her children Israel are judged to be worthy 228 also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement have Yom Kippur it shall be a holy gathering to you Vayikra 2327 Rabbi Shia opened with of David a masculine blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered Tehillim 321 we learned that the book of Tehillim is recited by ten kinds of songs by the chief musician by masculine understanding by Mike poem by a song by a song by blessed by prayer by acknowledgement by hallelujah the highest is hallelujah as we already explained 229 the location of masculine is known as Yezid of Bino what is that that is called masculine is that water which makes wise those who drink from it namely it bestows chakma the place called masculine is as in he who considers had masculine his words shall find good Michelet 1620 if masculine bestows on something there will be good in it which is the illumination of chakma clothed in chesedim. Since it is so called forgiveness and the greatest freedom come from it since forgiveness and freedom are bestowed from Chakma in Bina this is the secret of blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered since his transgression is forgiven by the plenty of Chakma 230 he asks what is meant by whose sin is covered and answers it was explained that the sin he committed before the Holy One blessed be he is covered from people and he confessed it before the Holy One. Blessed be he yet come and see when a man sins
deeds he already performed and he is entirely lost from this world and the world to come. He asks what does the Holy One blessed be he do from the good deeds of sinner accomplished before 233 he answers even though the wicked man is lost the good deeds and merits he committed are not lost for there is a righteous man who walks the ways of the supernal king and has made garments from his good deeds but before completing his garments he departed from the world the Holy One blessed be he completes him his garments from the good deeds the evil sinner has committed and perfects his garment for him to put in that world this is the meaning of the evil may prepare it but the just shall put it on Eo 2717 the evil man made it and the righteous man covers himself with what he made this is the meaning of whose sin is a covering the covering namely his garment comes from the sinner hence it is not written that it is covered but that is it a covering because it refers to a garment 234 the second meaning is that the sin that a worthy man has committed is covered inside what is called the depths of the sea for whatever fell into the depths of the sea is never found since the water covers it this is the meaning of and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea which is 719 what are the depths of the sea he answers this is a precious mystery which rabbi shimon explained he said all those coming from the harsh side and holding on to evil species and the lower Sphirot like Azazel on Yom Kippur is considered the depths of the sea this is called the depths of the sea like the ores of silver refined by fire this is meant by take away the dross from the silver Mishlei 254 235 thus this Azazel is from the depths of the sea and is called the depths of the sea that is the depths of that holy sea the depths refer to the filth of silver hence all the sins of Israel rest in it it receives them and they are drawn into it the reason is that Azazel is called sin sin means lessening hence it lessens everything reducing body and soul and receiving the bodily filth which is the sins done by the evil inclination that is called filthy and ugly 236 Rabbi Yossi said we learned and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats Vayikra 168 if this is so it is an honor to Azazel for have you ever seen a servant casting lots on equal footing with his master according to the custom a servant receives only what his master gives him and he answers sins. Samael is ready to speak evil of Israel, and in order not to give him any excuse he is given a portion 237 the lot reaches it on its own accord as Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Rabbi Yitzhak I found a celestial matter in that lot it is written of the lot of Joshua according to live by the mouth of the lot Bimidbar 2656 surely the lot said this is the portion of Judah this is the portion of Benjamin etc here too once the priest put his hands the lots were jumping and climbing the hand of the priest and come to their places this is the meaning of but the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel Vayikra 1610 surely it fell for Azazel on its own accord 238 not only that but as long as the prosecutor is ready and has permission something should be put before him to be occupied with and leave Israel on that day of Yom Kippur the prosecutor is ready to spy out the land as written and Hashem said to the adversary from where do you come Eo 17 we learned that from Going to and fro in the earth of it for this is the great prosecutor that denounces Israel 239 the friends remarked that when Israel were ready to cross the sea and take revenge on the Egyptians the prosecutor said I have passed the holy land and I see that these are not worthy of entering it if you meet out punishment their punishment here I ask like the Egyptians what is the difference between them either they will all die together or they will all return to Egypt was it not you who said and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years Beersheet 1513 but from the reckoning only 210 years have passed no more 240 the holy one blessed be he said what shall I do this calls for occupation something is needed to bring here and draw near him I shall give him something to be occupied with so he will leave my children let us find someone for him to be busy with forthwith he said have you considered my servant job that there is none like him on earth the he interrupted the prosecutor with words then the adversary answered Hashem and said does job fear Elohim for naught of it 9 241 this is likened to a shepherd who wanted to pass his flock across a river a wolf passed by and afflicted his flock the wise shepherd said what shall I do he might destroy the flock while I move the lambs across he raised his eyes and saw a wild goat big and strong he said I shall throw him before the wolf while they do battle with each other I shall remove all the flock and they shall be saved from him 242 so does the holy one blessed be he do he said I shall certainly throw a great powerful and forceful goat in his way namely job while he will be occupied with it my children shall cross the sea without a prosecutor over them immediately and Hashem said to the adversary have you considered eventually the holy one blessed be he joined them together as written behold he is in your hand Eo 26 while he was busy with him he left Israel alone and uttered no denouncement on them 243 similarly on that day of Yom Kippur the Satan is ready to spy out the land and we should send something before him with which to be busy while he is busy with it he will leave Israel alone there is an allegory about the lowliest in the king's house give him a little wine and he will praise you before the king otherwise he will speak evil words about you before the king sometimes the superiors in the king's house receive that evil speech and it king punishes that man 244 Rabbi Yitzhak said this is likened to a fool who is in the king's presence give him a little wine and then tell him and show him all the abominable things you have done and all the evil yet he will praise you and say there is none in the world like you here too the prosecutor is constantly in the king's presence Israel give him this offering of the go to Azazel in this offering there is a note where all is written down of the evil things the abominable things and the iniquities Israel did yet he comes and praises Israel and becomes their defender and the Holy One blessed be he returns everything upon the heads of the wicked of his people since it is written for you shall he calls a fire upon his head Mishlei 2522-245 Rabbi Yossi said woe to the people of Esau when that goat is sent to that slanderer who is appointed over them namely Samael the minister of Esau that comes to praise Israel for its sake the Holy One blessed be he returns all those iniquities on the head of his people because it is written he that tells lies shall not remain in my sight Tehillim 1017 Rabbi Yehuda said if the idolaters knew of the goat they would not let Israel live one day in the world 246 come and see all that day he busies himself with that goat and the Holy One blessed be he forgives Israel and cleanses them in every respect and there is no prosecutor in his presence he then comes and praises Israel the Holy One blessed be he then Asks him as written and Hashem said to the adversary from where do you come and he answers by praising Israel the prosecutor turns into a defender and goes his way 247 the Holy One blessed be he then says to the 70 ministers that's around his throne the secret of the celestial courthouse have you seen the slanderer how he is always about to slander my children behold there is a goat by him with a note with all their iniquities all their abominable acts and all that they sinned and transgressed before me but he accepted them upon himself they all agree then that these iniquities go back on his people 248 Rabbi Abba said all the iniquities and sins first are attached to him as written and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea Mishnah 719 then they return upon the heads of his people as written and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities to a barren land Be'ikra 1622 on that day the priest is adorned with lofty crowns and is situated. Between the higher and lower he atones for him for his household for the priests the temple and the whole of Israel 249 we learned that when the priest entered with the bullock's blood he meditated on the top of faith namely the first three Sfirah Kedar Shachma and Bina and sprinkled it with his finger as written and sprinkled it upon the covering and before the covering Vayikra 1615 that is one above and seven below how did he do that he dipped the finger dip in blood and sprinkled it drops as if swinging a whip at the side of the ark covering he did not let the drops fall on the covering itself but at its side and the drops fell on the ground he sprinkled and concentrated and started counting one which includes everything one which is the most valuable one to which everything turns one that is at the top namely the Sfirah Kedar next is one and one which are Shachma and Bina that dwell together willingly in brotherhood and never separate from each other 250. Upon reaching and one which is the mother of everything namely Bina he starts counting from here from Bina by joining counting and saying one and two namely joining Bina with two Chesed and Bura one and three joining Bina to Chesed Bura and Typharet one and four joining Bina to Chesed Bura Typharet and Netzach one and five joining Bina to Chesed Bura Typharet Netzach and Hod one and six joining Bina to Chesed Bura Typharet Netzach Hod and Yezid one and seven joining Bina to Chesed Bura Typharet
beings if not they were all in sorrow and all knew that their prayer was not accepted 252 Rabbi Yehuda said once he entered he closed his eyes so as not to look where he shouldn't when he heard the sound of the wings of the cherub singing and praising the priest would know that everything is in joy and went out in peace with all that through his prayer he would know since the words came out of his mouth in joy and were properly accepted and blessed and joy abounded among the higher end. Lower beings 253 Rabbi Lazar asked Rabbi Shimon his father why does the stay of Yom Kippur originate in that place Bana Ismail shoot the secret of the left ascents to Bana instead of from another place it would have been appropriate for it to be of the grade where the king dwells the most namely that she would unite with her husband Zeir and from the secret of the right Rabbi Shimon said to him my son Lazar surely it is so that it should come from Bana and you have asked well 254 he Answers come and see the holy king left his temple and house in the hand of the matron Malchut and left his children with her in order for her to guide them, strike them and dwell among them if they are worthy. The matron answers joyfully and honorably to the king if they are not worthy she and they are returned into exile. We already explained this as written the son of scandalous and shameful ways shall ruin his father and drive his mother away. Mishlei 1926 chasing her into exile and for your transgressions was your mother put away. Shea 501 255 therefore there is one day in the year to look at them and observe their deeds when that day comes. Supernal Ayamibana has in her hands all kinds of freedom namely the mokin of the illumination of Chakma clothed in Chesedim the secret of freedom they subjugate all the clipot and cause them to flee. She comes towards it that day to observe Israel namely to bestow plenty upon them and Israel hasten on that day with many kinds of Worship and prayers and many afflictions, all of them meritorious, then freedom comes upon them from the place where all freedom exists in the hand of the matron Malchut. This means that Malchut rises to Bina and receives all freedom from Bina. The king's children, Israel below her children who were trusted in her hands, are all meritorious without sins or iniquities. She then joins the king in light, joy, perfection, and goodwill because she raised proper children to the king that is she cleaves to. The right before Israel received purity and freedom from Bina, Malchut cannot unite with Zeir and, and receive the right from him. This settles the question of his son, Rabbi Lazar 256. When that day is not proper, woe to them to Israel, woe to their messenger, the high priest, woe to the matron who is distanced from the king, super Bina is gone, and no freedom comes from her to the world's happy are Israel, whom the Holy One blessed be he taught his way so as to be saved from judgment. And to be meritorious before him, this is the meaning of for on that day will he forgive you to cleanse you. Vayakra 1630, and then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncle Anesses. Yeshiskel 3625, section 35, the fifteenth day. Rabbi Abba tells Rabbi, you see the meaning of the fifteen days in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, saying that the first ten belong to the matron and the next five to the king on the fifteenth day. The moon is full, and the full moon is the secret of Malchut 257, the fifteenth day of the seventh month. Vayakra 2334, Rabbi, you see, asked Rabbi Abba, he said to him, what is the meaning of those fifteen days? He said to him, certainly they are a precious mystery. Come and see whether above or below everything journeys in its own way, sits in its own way, and awakens in its own way to do whatever it does that is nothing resembles anything else, both above and below the tenth is from the congregation of. Israel, that is, it alludes to Malchut, since the tenth day is based on the tenth sphere of Malchut, hence it is said, on the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers. Shemot 123, for the tenth is Malchut, and since the tenth firot reached completion on the tenth day, they shall take that day, the tenth day of the month is hers, while the other five days are the king's Zeir and that day comes upon her and fills her with her lights. Hence, on the fifteenth day the moon is full, for on the five days when the five firot of Zeir and reached completion, the king sits on the throne, which is Malchut, the secret of the full moon. 258, the ten always pertain to the matron, namely Malchut, the five above them are the kings, namely the first five firot of Zeir and who is the day that comes upon her, that is Zeir and for that reason, after the five days of the month of Sivan, the Torah is given, which indicates the five first firot of Zeir. And that bestowed plenty at the giving of the Torah, you may argue that the Torah should have been given on the seventh day, namely when the two parents Abba and Ima are clothed in him in Zeir and for the king when he is in them is then adorned with everything and is then worthy to give the Torah. He answers the fifth and the seventh are the same issue. Two hundred and fifty-nine come and see the fifth is surely as as we said Abba then shine upon Ima and from her the fifty gates shine upon the fifth. We may argue that it is the seventh. This is because the king abides in the wholeness of the parents that shine on him as his five together with Abba and Ima amount to seven. Moreover, he receives a crown from Bina that is called the seventh. If you count from Yisbina is the seventh sphere. This is as written. Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him. Sure, three hundred and eleven. Hence the seventh day is the day when Bina crowns the king Zeir and with his. Crowns the king also inherits and Abba and Ima that unite and shine into him together as with his own five. They are seven, thus it all depends on the same thing. Section 36, Man of the Well and the Clouds of Glory. Rabbi Yehuda tells us that Moses, Aaron, and Miriam through their merit gave Israel the man of the clouds of glory and the well, and that all of these celestial gifts are attached above. He emphasizes that there were seven clouds of glory and that after Aaron died, the clouds were gone and Israel was no longer protected by them. Rabbi Abba says that whoever excludes himself from the shadow of faith as represented by those clouds is worthy only of being a servant to servants of servants. Yet whoever dwells under the shadow of faith bequeaths freedom to all his descendants forever. 260 of the 15th day, Vayakra 2334. Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with, and when the Canaanite, the king of Arad, Bimidbar 211, we learned that three celestial gifts were. Given to Israel by the three siblings Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, the manna through the merit of Moses, the clouds of glory through the merit of Aaron, and the well through the merit of Miriam, they are all attached above the manna is by the merit of Moses as written, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Shemot 164 from heaven refers to Moses, namely the chariot to Zeir and been called Moses, and also called heaven 260 be the clouds of glory are by merit of Aaron, a chariot to Chesed as written that you Hashem are seen face to face, Bimidbar 1414, and the cloud of the incense may cover Vayakra 1613, as on the other verse in relation to incense, there are seven clouds, so in the former in your cloud stands over them, Bimidbar 1414, there are also seven clouds, for there were seven clouds of incense joined together, and Aaron is the uppermost of the seven clouds, for the seven clouds are the secret of Chesed, Burutai, for Netzach, Hadizid, and Malchut, Aaron, who is a chariot too. Chesed is the first sphere and he is daily connected through it to the six other clouds Biru, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadizid, and Malchut. The clouds are therefore considered to come by the merit of Aaron as he is an aspect of Chesed, the top cloud which includes them 261. The well comes by merit of Miriam who was a chariot to Malchut since she is surely called the well in the book of Gato we learned and his sister stood afar off to know Shema 24 this is a well of living water namely Malchut. And all was bound into one since Miriam was connected to Malchut when Miriam died the well was gone as written and there was no water for the congregation Bimid Bar 202 at that time another well wished to depart Malchut that was with Israel but when it saw the six clouds Chesed, Biru, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadizid, and Yizid that were connected to it to the cloud of Malchut her own aspect Malchut became connected to them 262 when Aaron died the clouds of glory were gone and with them was gone. Seventh cloud to which the well Malchut was attached, Moses returned them to them as written, You have ascended on high, you have led captivity captive, you have received gifts from men. Tehillim 6819, surely you have received gifts from men, the presence that were there before, namely the well and the clouds 263. This well is Isaac's well, namely Malchut, that is called well when receiving the illumination of Chakma from the left, called Isaac. These clouds are Aaron's clouds, which means that clouds are Shesedim because they are of the aspect of Aaron, who is J
Shall dwell in Booth 7 days. Vayakra 2342. The secret of the seven clouds of glory that went with Israel in the desert. What does that teach us? He answers. It is written. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Sure, Hashirim 23. The secret of the shadow of the clouds of glory and the secret of the shadow of the Sukkah man should display himself sitting under the shadow of faith. 265. Come and see throughout Aaron's life. Israel were under the shadow of faith under these seven clouds. After Aaron died, one cloud was gone, which is Jesus of the clouds, his own attribute. The one most to the right one that was gone, the other clouds were gone with it. The six fire rod included in IT. Every one of Israel were seen lacking. We explained the verse, and when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, Bimid Bar 2029. Do not pronounce it. Saw Habayru, but were seen Habayru, which means that the clouds shadow disappeared from them, and they were exposed immediately. And when the Canaanite, the king of Arad, who dwelt in the Negev, heard that Israel came by the way of Aaron, Bimid Bar 211, he heard that the clouds of glory were gone, and the great guy died to whom all the clouds were attached. 266. Rabbi Yitzhak said, Surely it was the Canaanite, the king of Arad, who dwelt in the Negev. When the spies Moses sent returned, they said, Amalek dwells in the land of the Negev, Bimid Bar 1329, in order to break their hearts since there. Strength was first broken by Amalek 267. Rabbi Abba said, The Canaanite heard why is the Canaanite mentioned here coming after the clouds were gone, and he answers, It is written of Canaan, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be to his brethren. Bear sheet 925. We learned here from the verse, The Canaanite heard that whoever excludes himself from the shadow of faith is worthy of being a servant to servants of servants, namely to Canaanites. This is the meaning of he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Bimid Bar 211, taking himself servants from among Israel 268. It is therefore written, All that are homeborn in Israel shall dwell in booths. Vayakra 2342. For whoever is from the root and holy stock of Israel shall dwell in booths under the shadow of faith. Whoever is not from the holy stock and root of Israel shall not dwell in them, but excludes himself from under the shadow of faith. 269. It is written, As for the merchant, also the Canaanite. The balances of the sea are in his hand. Hashia 128. This refers to Eliezer Abraham's servant. Come and see it is written. Curse be Canaan. Since this Canaan Eliezer merited to serve Abraham, and since he did serve Abraham and dwelt under the shadow of faith, he was worthy of being excluded from the curse. He was cursed with furthermore. Blessing is written about him as written, and he said, Come and you blessed of Hashem. Bereshit 2431. This teaches us that whoever dwells under the shadow of faith bequeaths freedom for himself and for his descendants forever, and is blessed with a celestial blessing. Whoever excludes himself from the shadow of faith bequeaths exile for himself and for his descendants as written. He fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. 270. You shall dwell in Boots Hep Sukkot. Sukkot is spelled without Bob because the Sukkot alludes to one cloud only, which is Jesus, to which all six clouds are attached. Hence there are seven days as written and the cloud of Hashem was upon them by day, Bimidbar 1034, and, and that you go before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud, Bimidbar 1414, which is Aaron's cloud, which is Jesus, that is called by day, as written, yet Hashem will command his Jesus in the daytime, Tehillim 429, one cloud which is Jesus receives with it five other clouds, which are Gura, Typharat, Net, Sashat, and Yezit, so there are six, another cloud of which is written, and in a pillar of fire by night, Bimidbar 1414, which is Malchut, shines on Yisrael from the illumination of the six clouds, section 37, the holiday of Sukkot, we learn that whoever is in the secret of the faith dwells in a Sukkot booth, and that one must offer a daily sacrifice on the seven days of Sukkot, offerings are made to the other nations because God wants them to be friends with Israel, R.A.I. Mahim, the faithful shepherd, 271, you shall dwell in booths, have Sukkot, seven days, Vayakra, 2342, it is a commandment to dwell in. A sukkah we explained that its purpose is to show that Israel dwell in the secret of faith, the secret of the shadow of the sukkah entirely without fear of denouncing since the prosecutor has already separated from them on Yom Kippur through the goat given to Azazel whoever is in the secret of faith dwells in a sukkah as we explained from the words all that are homeborn in Israel shall dwell in booths that is whoever is in the secret of faith of the seat and root of Israel shall dwell. In sukkah this mystery was brought in several places 272 the following commandment is to offer a daily sacrifice on the seven days of sukkah everyone should have a part in that sacrifice in his children's joy since the 70 bullocks correspond to the 70 ministers of the nations they are all attached to the trees eir and since the branches below that come from the root of the tree are all blessed because of the tree even though they are useless they are all also blessed Israel. Rejoice in their father in heaven namely in the root of the tree and they give a portion of the blessings to the rest of the nations who can hold and do hold to Israel 273 all those offerings the 70 bullocks were made to give nourishment to all the ministers appointed over the other nations since for the love of the holy one blessed be he as for his children he wants all the ministers to be their friends this is the meaning behind when a man's ways please Hashem he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him Mishlei 167 that is even the highest prosecutors become again friendly with Israel when the celestial forces again become friends to Israel those below do so even more 274 you may say that the sacrifices were offered to them to the 70 ministers this is not so but everything was offered and sacrificed to the holy one blessed be he and he divides the nourishment among the multitudes of the other sides namely the ministers of the 70 nations so they will enjoy his children's gift and again become their friends thus it shall be known above and below that there is no nation like Israel who are the portion and lot of the Holy One blessed be he and the glory of the Holy One blessed be he rises above and below as it should and all the celestial multitudes start by saying and what one nation in the earth is like your people like Israel 2 Shmuel 723 and of R.A.I. Mahim the Rabbi Lazar talks about the clouds that went with Israel through the wilderness we hear about the invitation for the guests of faith to enter the Sukkah and how important it is to give a portion of the meal to the poor 275 Rabbi Lazar opened with thus says Hashem I remember in your favor the devotion of your youth Yermeah 22 this verse was said about the congregation of Israel which is Malchut when she was walking with Israel in the wilderness I remember in your favor the Jesus refers to Aaron's cloud which is Jesus that traveled with five. Other clouds be retired for a net sash hot and yes that joined over you and shone upon you your love as a bride but as those clouds that incorporated you adorned you and bedecked you as a bride wearing her jewelry why all that because you did go after me in the wilderness in the land not so but because she walked with Israel in the wilderness 276 come and see when man sits in this apartment in the sukkah which is the shadow of faith the Shechina spreads her wings over him from above and Abraham who is Jesus and five other righteous the secret of be retired for a net sash hot and yes fixed their dwelling with him this is the meaning of you shall dwell in booths have so seven days vayikra 2342 it is written seven days which alludes to Jesus be retired for a net sash hot yes and Malchut instead of in seven days similarly it is written for six days Hashem made heaven and earth Shema 3117 instead of in six days they two indicate the supernal six days Jesus Bura. Typharet net sash hot and that made heaven and earth one should rejoice every day with a joyful countenance in those guests Jesus Bura Typharet net sash hot and Malchut that dwell with him 277 Rabbi Abba said it is written you shall dwell in booths have Sukkot seven days and then shall dwell in booths Vayakra 2342 it first says you shall dwell and then they shall dwell he answers the first one is for the guests Jesus Bura Typharet net sash hot and Malchut and therefore the text speaks in the second person the second is for people in general for which reason the text says in the third person shall dwell the first is for the guests Rabham Manasaba for example when he entered the Sukkah used to stay happily on the inner threshold of the Sukkah and say let us invite the guest he set the table stood up and blessed to dwell in the Sukkah then said you shall dwell in booths seven days sit down lofty guests sit you down sit down guests of faith sit. You down he joyf
Malachi 23 Woe to that man when those guests of faith stand back from his table 279 Rabbi Abba said Abraham throughout his life used to stand at the crossroad to invite guests and set the table for them now on Sukkot if one invites him and all the other righteous and King David but does not give them their share Abraham stands up from the table and cries depart I pray you from the tents of these wicked men Demon bar 16 26 and everyone walks away after him Isaac says but the belly of it Wicked shall feel want Mishlei 1325 and Jacob says the morsel which you have eaten shall you vomit up Mishlei 238 the rest of the righteous namely Moses and Aaron say for all tables are full of vomit and filth so that there is no place clean Yeshayah 288 280 King David said and he completes the execution of his punishments as written and it came to pass about 10 days after that Hashem smote Nabal and he died Ishmael 2538 he asks what does this mean and answers this is because David asked Nabal to accept him as a guest but he declined also he who sits at the Sukkah invited him King David yet did not give him his share therefore King David recited over him this verse about Nabal during the 10 days when King David Malchu judges the world during the 10 days of repentance that man is punished for it for rewarding him worse than Nabal by inviting him yet not giving him his share Nabal at least did not invite him 281 Rabbi Lazer said the Torah did not trouble man to give more than what he can afford as written every man shall give as he is able to borrow 1617 one must not say let me eat and be full and slake my thirst first and give the rest to the poor the first part belongs to the guest he who gladdens the guest and gives them to drink the holy one blessed be he is happy with him and Abraham says about him then shall you delight yourself in Hashem Yeshayah 5814 and Isaac calls no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper Yeshayah 5417 Rabbi Shimon said King David who is Malchut recited this verse to him because all the weapons of the king and the king's wars were delivered to David's hands but Isaac says his seed shall be mighty upon earth wealth and riches shall be in his house Tehillim 1122 to 3282 Jacob said then shall your light break forth have you begah like the morning Yeshayah 588 because you begah is spelled with the same letters as Jacob the other righteous say and Hashem shall guide you continually and satisfy Ibn 11 King David said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper because he was appointed over all the weapons in the world happy is a lot of the man who merited all this happy is a lot of the righteous in this world and in the world to come of them it is written your people also shall be all righteous Yeshayah 6021 we are told that it is a commandment to take a lulav on the day of Sukkot Rai Mahin the faithful shepherd 282b it is a commandment to take a lulav on that day with its kinds we explained the secret as did the friends just as the holy one blessed be he takes Israel during those days and rejoices in them so do Israel take the holy one blessed be he as their portion and rejoice in him this is the secret of the lulav and the kinds in it the secret of the form of man namely the secret of the seven sfarach chesed bura tiferet net sach and malchut the three myrtle branches correspond to chesed bura and tiferet the two willow branches. To Netzach and Hadalalaf to Yezid and Ishrab to Malchud we already learned this end of Rai Mahin the section 38 an image and the likeness Rabbi Shimon talks about how Elohim created man in his own image and gave him his name when he produced truth and law in the world since the word for judges is Elohim he says that man was created both male and female in image and the likeness when people made below God sends a certain image as the countenance of man that hovers over the union and by that image man is created when the man grows in the world he grows through that image that came from above and walks by that image for holy Israel that image comes from the side of holiness but for the heathen nations the image comes from the other side this is why one must not mix his image with that of the heathen 283 and you shall take for yourselves on the first day Vayikra 2340 Rabbi Shimon opened with everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory I have formed him yeah, I have made him Yeshayah 437 everyone that is called by my name refers to man whom the Holy One blessed be he created by his name as written so Elohim created man in his own image Bereshit 127 and called him after his name when he produced truth and law in the world and is called Elohim as written you shall not revile the judges have Elohim Shema 2227 284 he called him by his name as written so Elohim created man in his own image this is well we explained that the words let us make man in our image after our likeness of 26 were uttered during the union of Zeir and Malchut and so when the two mate there is an image and a likeness since the images from Zeir and and the likeness from Malchut man came out from male and female namely Zeir and and Malchut 285 so Elohim created man in his own image I found in the book of King Solomon that when a union is affected below the Holy One blessed be he sent a certain image as the countenance of man imprinted and engraved with an image it hovers over that union if the eye had permission to behold man would see over his head an image inscribed as a man's face by that image man is created man was not created before that image which his master sent him is stationed over his head this is the meaning of so Elohim created man in his own image 286 that image comes to him before he goes into the world when he goes out into the world he grows through the image and walks by that image this is the meaning of surely every man walks in a vain show or image Tehillim 397 that image comes from above 287 when those spirits leave their place each spirit is bedecked before the holy king with a precious ornament the countenance existing in this world that image comes from that shape and precious ornament for the image is a garment for the spirit of that man and comes down together with it as they are like light and vessel it is the third counting from the spirit Hebrew that is the third category the Ruash is the first Nefesh is the second and the image is the third it is the first to come into the world during mating no mating takes place in the world without an image in it but as for holy Israel that holy image comes to them from a holy place while the image of the idolatrous comes to them from those evil species on the side of impurity for that reason one must not mix his image with that of the heathen because the one is Pure while the other is impure come and see the difference between Israel and the heathen nations the end was printed in Vayaki 196 to 232 section 39 Shemini Atzeret we read about the eighth day of the assembly that is Sukkot and that is the day of rejoicing the supernal lamps cause the supernal anointing oil to burn that draws the blessings to Israel through the deed of lighting the lamps below the lamps above are lit because deeds below cause deeds to awaken above. 288 as it is written on the eighth day Shemini you shall have a solemn assembly at Atzeret Bimit bar 2935 this is the ending of the article from Vayaki 231 for that day is from a king solely is rejoicing in Israel this is like a king who invited guests to the household people entertained them at the end the king said to his household until now I and you all entertained the guests you offered sacrifices for the other nations every day that is the 70 bullocks from now on for one day. Let you and me rejoice this is the meaning of on the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly you means offering sacrifices for you but the guests of faith on the seven days of Sukkot are always with the king on Shemini Atzeret as well on the day of the king's joy they all gather to him and stay with him hence it is written assembly which is translated into Aramaic is gathering 289 on that day Jacob who is Tiferet is the first to rejoice and all the other guests Abraham Isaac Moses Aaron Joseph and David rejoice with him hence it is written happy are you Israel who is like you Debarim 3329 and you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshayah 493 290 that they bring to you pure oil oppressed for the light Vayikra 241 Rabbi Lazar said this was explained but why would the Holy One bless be he placed this passage next to the passage of the holidays and he answers all the supernal lamps namely the Sfirot the secret of the holidays are all lamps. That cause the supernal anointing oil to burn that is draw the plenty of chakma called oil we already learned that through Israel the higher and lower beings are blessed and the lamps are kindled that is they shine upon the world we explained it according to the words ointment and perfume or incense rejoice the heart Mishlei 279 that Isaac gladdens the higher and lower beings 291 Rabbi Abba opened with be glad in Hashem and rejoice O you righteous Tehillim 3211 and this is the day which Hashem has made we will rejoice and be glad in it Tehillim 11824 it was explained that one should rejoice with and display a joyous face to the Holy One blessed be he man should be in a state of joy on it because that joy is of the Holy One blessed be he is written we will rejoice and be
There is no need for an action in everything or to utter words by means of sound to cause awakening above. May he breathe his last. The portion proves it by the kindling of the lamps and the incense spices as written ointment and perfume or incense rejoice the heart. For through the steed of kindling the lamps and the incense below there is kindling and joy above and below and a proper joining together of chakma and bina for oil arouses chakma and incense bina. Rabbi Yehuda said the altar below arouses another altar which is malchut. The priest below arouses another priest who is chesed since by a deed below a deed above is awakened. Section 40. Bain talk on Shabbat. Rabbi Yitzhak tells Rabbi Yossi why it is wrong to speak of vain matters on Shabbat because it awakens non holiness on the holy day. This causes deficiency. Contemplation without speech is acceptable because it does not activate anything. Holy speech rises up and awakens the holy spirit. 294 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yitzhak were walking along the way. Rabbi Yossi said to Rabbi Yitzhak, It is written and call the Shabbat to delight the holy day of Hashem honorable Yeshayah 5813 and shall honor it not doing your own ways if it is fine but what does nor pursuing your own business nor speaking of vain matters if it mean and what deficiency is there for the Shabbat if one is engaged in speaking of vain matters. 295 He said to him, Assuredly a lack is caused to the Shabbat because there is not a word coming out of man's mouth that is soundless. The sound rises up and awakens another word. It is that which is called non-holiness for whatever is not holy. I as non-holy pertaining to the non-holy workdays when non-holiness is awakened on the holy day, it surely causes deficiency and the holy one blessed be he and the congregation of Israel ask about him who is it that desires to interrupt our union who is he that needs a non-holy does not appear nor dwell on it. Not holy 296 for that reason contemplation is permissible the reason is that contemplation does not activate anything no sound is formed from it and it does not rise but after pronouncing words in his mouth the speech turns into sound it cleaves the air and firmaments and rises up to awaken another speech of non-holiness hence it is written nor pursuing your own business nor speaking of vain matters but not contemplation if one arouses a holy speech from his mouth the sound is formed from the words of Torah rises up and awakens the holy ones of the supernal king namely the holy spirit they become crowns on his head and joy then abounds above and below section 41 he who fasts on Shabbat Rabbi Yossi asks whether someone who fasts on Shabbat creates a lack of some kind since joy is called for on that day Rabbi Yitzhak explains what the effect of that sorrow is and how it can lead to forgiveness he says that every day has special power resting on it and Talks about those who fast because of a bad dream they had the fast must take place on the same day because no day has authority over any other day 297 he said to him surely it is so and I heard it but he asks does whoever fasts on Shabbat create a lack on Shabbat or not if you say he does not still the meals of faith were made void and his punishment is great since the joy of Shabbat fails in him 298 he said to him I heard this attention is paid to this from above more than to all the people in the world because that day supplies joy above and below it is joy above any other joy joy that contains the whole faith in it even the evil and Gehenom rest on that day yet that man has neither joy nor rest he is at variance with the higher and lower beings everyone inquires after him what happens that so and so abides in sorrow 299 when Atika Kaddish appears on that day on Shabbat yet that man abides in sorrow his prayer rises and stands before him and all verdicts he was Sentenced to are torn up even if the king's courthouse agreed upon it against him everything is torn up for when Atika Kaddisha is revealed every kind of freedom and joy abides because he is revealed in the feast of joy of the king's EIR and 300 hence we learn that his verdict of 70 years is torn up what are the 70 years he answers it means that though all 70 Sfirat of the king which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit and Malchut that contain each 10 Sfirat in which he was seen agreed upon it everything is torn up for Atika Kaddisha takes that man that is protects him this refers to the case of rousing him through a dream on Shabbat night that is if he afflicts himself with fasting on account of a bad dream but not for a different kind of fast 301 this is likened to a king who made a joyful feast for his son and decreed that everybody would be joyful on that joyful day everyone was glad except one man who was sad bound by fetters the king came to the feast and saw everybody glad as he decreed he lifted his eyes and saw that man in fetters he said the whole world rejoices in my son's joy yet this man is fettered he immediately gave a command and he was liberated and released from his chains 302 it is the same with one who fasts on Shabbat everybody is glad yet he is in sorrow bound by chains when Atika Kaddisha is revealed on that day and this man is bound by fetters even if the 70 years agreed upon him that we mentioned that is the seven spirat of Zeir and everything is torn up and judgment does not rest on him on another day that is if he fasts on a weekday there is permission to tear up his verdict on that day and all the more so on Shabbat 303 every day has a special power resting on it whoever fasts on account of a bad dream the same day he dreamt it his punishment is torn up before that day passes but not that of 70 years standing as on Shabbat because one should fast on the very day and on no other Day for no day has an authority over another day whatever happens during a certain day he can act on that day and repeal the punishment whatever did not happen on that day he cannot act or repeal the punishment hence one must not delay the fast from one day to another for that reason we learned everything upon its day Vayikra 2337 and not anything of its day on another day 304 come and see not in vain was he roused by means of a bad dream but in order to beg for mercy on himself woe to that man who is not aroused nor informed in a dream because he is called evil hence nor shall evil dwell with you Tehillim 55 and he that has it shall abide satisfied he shall not be visited with evil Mishlei 1923 he shall not be visited by a bad dream because he is bad 305 Rabbi Yossi said it is written nor pursuing your own business nor speaking of vain matters Yeshayah 5813 what is speaking of vain matters even speaking about what one needs pertains to your own business but he Answers it means until that speech is pronounced and spoken that is a command to speak words of Torah surely this is the meaning of this which is derived from nor speaking of vain matters happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come of them it is written for he said surely they are my people children that will not lie so he was their deliverer Yeshayah 638 section 42 and the son of a Nyireli woman Rabbi Yehuda says that anyone who comes from polluted seed will eventually expose it before everyone Rabbi Shia tells us that a man has no permission to reveal concealed matters that were not disclosed in order to be revealed some generations are not worthy of having hidden matters revealed during Rabbi Shimon's lifetime revelations were made and understood but after his death they were no longer understood we read about the consequences of the blasphemy uttered by the Nyireli woman son Rabbi Yehuda says that one is not punished for Swearing by his own God, but only if he blasphemes the holy name. 306 And the son of an Yireli woman whose father was an Egyptian man went out. Vayikra 2410 Rabbi Yehuda said he went out from the portion of Israel, went out from being a part of anything, went out from the whole of faith, strove together in the camp of it. From this we learned that whoever came from polluted seed will eventually expose it before everyone what brought it upon him the pollution of the evil part in him, for he has no part among the whole of Israel. 307 Rabbi she opened with it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Mishlei 252 This means a man has no permission to reveal concealed matters that were not disclosed for revelation things hidden by Attic, given that is that pertain to the first three Sfirat is written to eat sufficiently and for stately clothing or concealing Attic. Yeshayah 2318 Namely revealing up to that place one has permission. That is from the aspect of the six extremities but no more hands concealing attic surely not revealing what one has no permission to namely the first three Sfirah 308 another explanation for to eat sufficiently refers to the friends who know the roots and paths to properly walk away of faith such as the generation when Rabbi Shimon lived and concealing attic refers to other generations none of which are worthy of eating to satiation or of having matters revealed among them but to conceal attic is written do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin Kahila 55 309 during Rabbi Shimon's life a man would say to his neighbor open your mouth and let your words shine forth after he died they used to say do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin during his life to
His mother's name once it says blasphemed he blasphemed his mother's name 311 Rabbi Abba said had not the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon been living in the world I would not have permission to reveal this for permission was given to reveal this matter only to the friends among the reapers of the field that is those who already entered the concealed wisdom and came out in peace may those who wish to reveal to those who do not know breathe their last 312 come and see it is written and this son of the Yireli woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp we already explained this verse yet this man of Israel is the son of his father Shalomith's husband from a different wife when the Egyptian man came into her to Shalomith at midnight her husband returned home and realized this he separated from her and no longer came into her he married another woman and begot this man who is called the man of Israel the other man from the Egyptian is called the Yireli. Woman son he asked if they strove here together why mention the holy name here and why did he curse the holy name 313 he answers the man of Israel said words during the fight about the mother of the son of the Yireli woman namely he said she was a whore immediately the Yireli woman son blasphemed Hebeah the name as in and bored Hebeah a hole in a little bit the meaning behind it is that he took the last hay of the holy name Yudhi Hebeah which is malchut and cursed in order to defend his mother this is the hole he pierced and mentioned the holy name explicitly this was told to the reapers of the field the secret of it is likewise the way of an adulterous woman Mishlei 3020 happy is a lot of the righteous who know this matter yet keep it hidden therefore it is said debate your cause with your neighbor and do not reveal the secret of another Mishlei 259 the secret is too deep and cannot be revealed 314 the last hay of the name Yudhi Hebeah was the Nukba nourishing from two sides mercy and judgment for that reason it took the king's weapons and executed its vengeance as written bring forth him that has cursed Vayikra 2414 for that reason it is written you shall fear every man his mother and his father Vayikra 193 the fear of one's mother preceding the fathers happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come 315 and you shall speak to the children of Israel saying whoever curses his Elohim shall bear his sin. Vayikra 2415 Rabbi Yehuda said this was already explained yet whoever curses his Elohim is general since it says his Elohim in general he shall bear his sin and will not be punished because we do not know who his Elohim is what he reveres whether he is one of the appointed angels or one of the stars or one of the leaders of the world 316 Rabbi Yehuda said if he were holy righteous he would not have awakened their powers by cursing them since he did so we fear he is touched by heresy. Nonetheless he will not die for it because it is a general word not explaining who is Elohim is 317 Rabbi Yehuda said he is judged favorably that way had he said my Elohim and cursed him he can argue this is my Elohim I had until now after which I was drawn yet now I return in repentance to receive the supernal faith but had he said Hashem Elohim or yet Hebab mentioning it by name he has no case for this is everybody's faith and each letter of the holy name amounts to the whole. Name 318 according to another explanation for and the Yireli woman son blasphemed the name and cursed Rabbi Yitzhak said why the Yireli woman son blasphemed this is as we explained that the man of Israel was Shalomith's husband Rabbi Yehuda said he was Shalomith's husband son from another woman Rabbi Yitzhak said they fought together and he said about his mother that she was a whore and that his Egyptian father was killed by means of the holy name by Moses as we explained. The verse do you intend let's speak to kill me Shema 214 he therefore extended the speech to him that is let him know while they were fighting 319 this is the meaning of and the Yireli woman son blasphemed the name and cursed and they brought him to Moses the reason is that he came to Moses complaining that he killed his father by means of the holy name for that reason they brought him to Moses when Moses saw that immediately they put him in custody they 2412 both father and son fell into Moses hand section 43 whoever curses his Elohim Rabbi Yitzhak says that one must not allow the evil inclination to enter him because then a foreign dwells in him and then he transgresses the Torah therefore whoever curses his Elohim can claim he was cursing the evil inclination that is inside him but anyone who blasphemes the name of Hashem shall be put to death in this world and in the world to come because all the worlds depend on it. Holy name while walking through the fields Rabbi Shimon tells the rabbis that everything in the world serves the world somehow and that one must not treat anything with contempt even things that seem to harm the world are actually good as they serve the world in some way 320 whoever curses his Elohim shall bear his sin Vayikra 2415 Rabbi Yitzhak opened with here O my people and I will testify against you O Israel if you will hearken to me there shall be no strange element among you nor shall you worship any foreign el Tehillim 819 to 10 he asks since it is written there shall be no strange element among you what is meant by nor shall you worship any foreign el and he answers there shall be no strange element among you means one must not allow the evil inclination to enter inside himself for whoever comes to join it a foreign el dwells within him for when man joins it he promptly comes to transgress the words of the Torah and transgress the faith in the holy name then he comes to bow. Before a foreign el it therefore says there shall be no strange element among you if you will have no strange element among you you shall not come to bow to a foreign el or transgress the faith in the holy name this is the meaning of nor shall you worship any foreign el which is man's evil faith 321 therefore whoever curses his Elohim can claim he cursed that foreign el the evil inclination that rests over him at times and we cannot know whether his words are true or not hence he shall bear. His sin only but he that blasphemes the name of Hashem shall surely be put to death. Vayikra 2416 322 Rabbi Yehuda said if that is so that he speaks about the evil inclination why I as it written shall bear his sin it should have said his sin is forgiven he said to him this I as like saying my Elohim vaguely as we said not specifying whether he referred to a foreign el which is the evil inclination hence it cannot be written that his sin is forgiven because the matter is in doubt Rabbi. She has said whoever curses his Elohim is said in general without specifying such a man surely shall bear his sin and not be punished but he that blasphemes the name of Hashem shall surely be put to death for this is the source for everybody's faith he is allowed to plead nothing for himself he cannot claim that he referred to another Elohim 323 Rabbi Yossi said it is surely so for this name why Yudhi Hebabhe is the faith of the higher and lower beings all the worlds are based on it. Thousands and tens of thousands of worlds of yearning suspend from one small letter which is Yud and many thousands and tens of thousands are suspended from each and every letter and rise to be connected to faith which is Malchut all that the higher and lower beings have not comprehended is concealed in them and the Torah comes out from them this world and the world to come he and his name are one hence it is written I will take heed to my ways that I said not with my tongue Tehillim 392 and do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin Kahila 55 324 Rabbi Shizkiah opened with no hand shall touch him but he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be beast or man it shall not live when the horn sounds long Shemot 1913 and if it is said of Mount Sinai which is a mountain like any other mountain once the glory of the holy king appeared on it no hand shall touch him but he shall surely be stoned or shot through it is much more so about whoever approaches the king. And if of Mount Sinai to which one could extend a hand in a respectful and reverent manner it is yet said no hand shall touch him in a neutral way not even in a respectful manner it would be more emphatic about extending a hand contemptuously towards the king 325 Rabbi Yes opened with do not come near put off your shoes from off your feet for the place on which you stand is holy ground Shema 35 it says do not come near of Moses from whom since the day he was born the holy supernal splendor was not removed the holy one blessed be he said to him Moses until this moment you are not worthy to serve my glory put off your shoes from off your feet if this is written of Moses even though he approached in reverence and holiness it is far more so of whoever approaches the king with contempt 326 Rabbi Abba said whoever curses his Elohim shall bear his sin come and see when Israel lived in Egypt they were familiar with the ministers of the world appointed over the other. Nations each had his own idol once they connected to the bond of faith and the Holy One blessed be he drew them toward his service they left them and drew near the supernal holy faith hence it is written whoever curses his Elohim namely one of the seventy ministers even though it is idolatry since I appointed them as ministers to guide the world whoever curses and desecrates them shall bear his sin surely for by my power they
This is more so if the actions are true like those channels in the fields that exist according to the laws of celestial providence that is this action has a root above 328 he opened and said and Elohim saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good. Bereshit 131 and Elohim saw everything that he had made was said in general including even snakes scorpions and mosquitoes even those that seem to harm the world it is written of them all and behold it was very good they all serve the world and guide the world though people do not know 329 while they were walking they saw a snake moving before them Rabbi Shimon said it is surely going to perform a miracle for us the snake moved fast before them entangled with the viper in the middle of the road they fought each other and died when they reached them they saw the two lying on the road Rabbi Shimon said blessed is the merciful who made us a miracle for whoever looked at the viper when it is alive or it looks at a man he cannot be saved from it and more so if he comes near it he recited over it no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling Tehillim 9110 the holy one blessed be he makes use of everything for his errands and we must not treat lightly anything he had made hence it is written Hashem is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works all your works shall praise you Hashem Tehillim 1459 to 10 section 44 the tulip and the lily Rabbi Shimon talks about the special relationship that God has with the congregation of Israel. He says that Malchut is the lily of the valleys because she changes sometimes to the good and sometimes to evil, sometimes to judgment and at other times to mercy. 330 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with I am the tulip of the Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Sher Hasharim 21 How beloved is the congregation of Israel, namely Malchut before the Holy One, blessed be he, the Holy One, blessed be he. Praises her and she praises him constantly. How many hymns and songs did she compose always to the king? Happy is a lot of Israel who are attached to the lot of the holy portion as written for Hashem's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. Devarim 329, 331. I am the tulip of the Sharon refers to the congregation of Israel. Malchut that is called the tulip. She stands with majestic beauty in the garden of Eden to be planted. Sharon means that she sings Hebshara and Praises the supernal king Zeir and according to another interpretation I am the tulip of the Sharon as she Malchut needs to be watered by the flow of the deep river the source of the streams bind as written the Sharon is like the Arabic Shea 339 Sharon means the plain this means the tulip that is in the plain is thirsty for water because the sun burns it 332 the lily of the valleys means she is situated where it is deepest what are the deep valleys they feature in the verse out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem Tehillim 1301 the lily of the valleys comes from the place where the water of the deep rivers comes from and never ceases flowing that is where Bina is revealed the lily of the valleys is a lily of that place that is considered the deepest hidden in every direction namely from the hidden place of Bina 333 come and see at first Malchut is a green leaf green tulip and she is a two colored lily red and white it is a lily of six. Hebshisha leaves a lily that changes Hebmesh and its colors and changes from one color to another. A lily first is called the tulip, namely when she wishes to unite with the king, she is called the tulip. After uniting with the king with kisses, she is called the lily since it is written his lips like lilies. Sher Hasharim 513, she is a lily of the valleys because she changes, changing her colors sometimes to the good and sometimes to evil, sometimes to judgment and at times to mercy. Section 45 The sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Rabbi Shimon says that when God created Adam, he asked him to be always in the bond of faith, to never change or turn to be single hearted in his devotion. But after Adam and Eve sinned, they then clung to a place that changes from good to evil and from evil to good. They left their attachment to the highest that is one and never changing God then told Adam that they had left life and were now subject to death, all others on. Earth followed Adam's example which is why the whole world suffers death. Lastly Rabbi Shimon tells us that in the world to come God will destroy death forever and all will cling to the tree of life. 334 And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes. Bear she 36 come and see people do not know observe or pay attention that when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam and honored him with supernal glory he asked him to cleave to him so that he will be unique of a single heart in a place of single devotion that he will never change or turn but be in that bond of the unique faith to which everything is attached. This is the secret of the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Bear she 29 namely Zeir and called the tree of life so that he will be attached to it as it has not the duality of good and evil. 335 Afterwards they strayed from the way of faith and left the pureless supernal tree elevated above all other trees. Which is the tree of life, namely Zeir and Ben, and they came to cleave to a changing place that turns from one manner to another, from good to evil, and from evil to good, namely to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They descended from above downwards and cleaved below to many changes. They left the highest, which is one and never changing. This is what is meant by that Elohim has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Kahilat 729, namely the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That contains many changes, their heart and changed by that very aspect, as they were sometimes inclined towards good and sometimes towards evil, sometimes to mercy and sometimes to judgment. Surely it resembles that to which they clung. They have sought out many inventions and became attached to them. 336, the Holy One, blessed be he said to him, Adam, you have left life and cleaved to death. Life is as in the verse, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, namely a tree called life. Because whoever is attached to it never tastes death and you cleave to another tree surely death is before you this is what is meant by her feet go down to death Mishle 55 and, and I find more bitter than death the woman Kahilat 726 surely he cleaved to the region of death and left the region of life for that he and the whole world were sentenced to death 337 he asks if he sinned what is the sin of the whole world why was everybody sentenced to death you may say that all creatures came and ate of this tree and it was sampled by all this is not so when Adam rose to his feet all creatures saw him and feared him they followed him like servants before a king and he said to him you and I O come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before Hashem our maker Tehillim 956 and they all followed him when they saw Adam bowing to that place the tree of knowledge of good and evil and cleaving to it they all followed him for that reason he brought death upon himself and the whole World 338 Adam then changed in many ways now to good and now to evil now to wrath and now to pleasure now to judgment and now to mercy now to life and now to death he never remains permanently at any of them this was brought to him by that place the tree of knowledge of good and evil hence it is called the blade of the revolving sword from one side to another from good to evil from mercy to judgment from war to peace it revolves in all directions and is called good and evil as written but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it Bereshit 217 339 the supernal king whose mercy is upon his handiwork reproved him saying to him but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it yet he did not accept from him but followed his wife and was banished forever since the woman rises no higher than that place and the woman brought death unto all 340 come and see of the world to come it is written for as the days of a tree shall be. Days of my people be Yeshua 6522 The days of the tree refers to that famous tree the tree of life of that time it is written he will destroy death forever and Hashem Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces Yeshua 258 Blessed be Hashem forever and ever Amen and Amen May Hashem reign forever Amen and Amen